We are live. How's We're that live. feel? How's that feel? You feel good about that? I mean, I feel alive. Do you feel good about that? Do you feel good about that? Do you feel good about that? All right. Once uh, JD feel con. Oh, one second. Wait, wait, don't no, stay there, stay there. Ready for show. Oh, how real? All right, go ahead, hit record. Yeah, I know it's the JD show, but maybe we could get me record. Oh, look, we're, we're doing the thing. <laughs> All right, so let's get some Instagram so we can... Uh, oh, my God, he's going to do one of these things. Let's make fun of him while he does it, everyone. Yeah. This is new for me, so I'm uncomfortable with making fun of him. Ooh. Who the hell is this guy? Anyway, look at this kid. Hey, Tom. Why? Can we get little hats? Yeah, you can get hats. Can have the, the podcast logo on. Yeah, I know. Whenever he does these videos, he just talks about what we're doing, and he thinks that's actually how you market. But, uh, hey, yeah, we're doing a podcast. Come watch it, 3 o'clock to whenever. It's on our YouTube. Well, you might as well just say that if you're going to talk about the podcast. That's, uh, yeah. Lying after I know. Just follow the link that's attached to this for the swipe up. That'll make it easier so JD doesn't have to think about adventure. I don't know. It could be about how we're having fun doing what we're doing, but not necessarily asking questions about, hey, what do you think about podcasts? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the live behind the scenes. You get to see the stuff before we actually start the show. Today's show is going to be about the topic of, uh, hey, why don't people like my artistic efforts? Because you need to love your artistic efforts for yourself. That's efforts, not efforts. I don't know. I can't speak today. I'm having having a hard day on uh, being alive, mostly because I'm human. That's what happens. Anyway, today we're going to really, uh, JD and I are going to discuss the process of creating art and also the idea that art itself doesn't necessarily sell. And sometimes people supply their efforts strictly towards the creation of an idea, uh, whatever it is. And that idea doesn't go anywhere. They're like, why isn't my stuff making money? You know, and they put time and money and effort solely into the artistic venture, be it music, uh, painting, writing, acting, comedy, whatever it is you do that's artistic. And then they say, why is nothing coming out of this? And the reason is because no one cares about your art. You have to make them care about it. And the only way they're going to care about it is if they could attach to your brand emotionally. Uh, but today we are going to focus on the artist brain and uh, really dissecting dissecting uh, um, the reality of you know, I have an ego. JD has an ego. We're artists. We all have egos. We want people to like what we create. I mean, Van Gogh himself uh, suffered from depression, thought he was crap. And it wasn't until after he died that his pieces became uh, amazing successes. And in reality, you know, he was changing the world with his art. But even Van Gogh died poor. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio rarely ever finished any of his work. Rarely. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci? Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, DiCaprio well, has yeah. definitely finished most of his things. That's what I mean. Well, no, I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever seen his projects? They don't seem finished. They don't feel finished. They don't seem finished. I'm just I'm just pointing out the obvious. I don't want to I don't want to sound crazy, but it's true. Anyway, so today we're going to really discuss that and see where that goes. Feel free to comment, ask questions on the subject. Do you feel like your art itself is holding you back? Do you feel that nothing is coming from your creative aspects? Do you want more out of it? And uh, obviously, uh, I, I just got to share this because you know I get yelled at if I don't. Well, not. I mean, the dog not dead. He yells at me all the time. He's like, "Hey, do that thing." Anyway, are you ready? Or what's going on? I mean, are yeah. you still doing stuff. I'm doing the share oh, right. to BBR. All right, good, good, good. <laughs> Hey, hey, go, go, JD, go. what's your thoughts on a podcast? <laughs> what do you like doing about podcasts? I mean, I like getting to talk into the microphone. JD is the kind of person that goes on a radio show and he's there to, uh, you know, market his album. And uh, the uh, the guy on the radio show doesn't ask him about his album and he gets uh, upset. Yeah, that's totally not me. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm here for my album. You know what I like about albums? My album's done. Look at my album. That's weird. It's totally not exactly what I would do. Would you have done it before you met me? Yes. See, <laughs> I'm just saying that's the artist brain. JD is the artist on this show and I am the business, but now he's the business. So I'll be the artist. Tell me what I should do. Invest in paint brushes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a musician. Exactly. Oh, all right. You'll thank me later. What do I do? With Next this, place. What do I do with this laser and duct tape? <laughs> anyway. Now that the bass players kept busy. That's right. The <laughs> bass player. Do we have the heat on blasting yet? Uh, we do. Oh, Jesus. Turn it off. Hit the thing. You, no, I don't want to upset you. 
You're not going to upset. You're going to freeze. It's going to be cold before I the got, day is listen, over. I got long sleeves and a hat on. All right. I'm going to turn the heat off. I can't take it. Do it. Oh, God, it's a lot. We have one viewer. I'm assuming it's your, uh, it's one of your, um, whatchamacallit's, uh, fan, fangirls. I'm assuming. Maybe. It, it's probably a fangirl. I, I, I really want the dog to have his own, like, like tablet that we don't know about, and it's actually him. Well, he has his own uh, Instagram that he uploads on. I mean, that's true. Yeah, and he's always talking about how Papa is terrible. And that I'm Papa. He's like, he loves his Papa. He's like, I hate Papa. I like Uncle Papa better. I mean, Uncle Papa is pretty cool. Yeah, Uncle Papa is cool. <laughs> Except for when it comes to marketing. All right. So <laughs> it's terrible at marketing. You're not that bad at marketing, but once you start learning how to do it, we'll, we'll be able to determine that. We'll determine that. All right. What are we doing today? What's going on? Anything? I don't know. I'm going uh, winging it with you. What are we doing? We're talking winging about. Uh, don't you know? I just said. Bringing a prayer. You didn't. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about living on a prayer. Do you know what today's show is about? Uh, why is no one uh, interested in my art? Yeah, why do people put so much time into their art? They're like, hey, my art, you know, they, art is important. Anyway, let's start the show. Let's do it. We're going to start the show. Again, if you have any questions, lay them out. We can see the comments. Comment Hi, away. Comments. Hello, comments. Well, if you're uh, one of JD's fan boy, uh, fangirls, let us know. Uh, you know, you don't have to say who you are, but you could just be like, JD's the best thing since sliced bread. And write things like, you're amazing with your toes. And I'll be like, what? what? And then I'll be like, Exactly. What toes? <laughs> I've seen his toes. Funny story, actually. He's, he's got nice toes, actually. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, I was hanging him upside down, and he was like, please don't. And I was like, I'm vanilla icing you. Take care. And you're like, oh, wow, look, you got really nice toes. Yeah, like, I'm going to pull you back up. <laughs> <laughs> these are good toes. <laughs> All right, anyway. Hey, uh, I don't make this stuff up. Uh, you know, I'm Thomas J. Belez. This is J.D. McGibney. Hi. I don't make this stuff up. I, well, honestly, uh, I make up none of it. JD makes up what? I got at least half of it. Half? Jesus. 100% of the time, it's 50%. Uh, the dog doesn't make up anything. I don't know what it is. Uh, he totally makes up all yeah. of it. JD says it's because I'm the smarts and he's the farts and the dog is the heart. You know, I think you got that mixed up. Oh, oh, I'm the farts. Who's the hearts? Uh, we're all the farts at least we're all once the a day. I like how JD is the hearts. <laughs> I'm the smarts and the dog is the farts. However, I feel I am also the farts at my age. I'll be honest. There's sometimes I wake up and I just look at the dog and he looks at me and we don't know <laughs> who woke the other up. I mean, it's pretty really? funny when he's just laying around on the floor and you know, wakes himself up with the farts. Yeah. All right. So you as the artist, <laughs> uh, how much time, how, how much uh, uh, energy did you used to put into music? Uh, oh. Before I met you, that was the main focus of everything. I just ended up putting all the focus into writing the music because I was under mm -hmm. the assumption that, uh, you know, the, the music and the art was going to be what made or, you know, made or broke my career. Now, with that said, did you feel the music had to be perfect? Yes. And what do you think perfect is? Um, What do I think it is now or what mm -hmm. do I think it was back, back then? then? Back then, because we're going to get to now. I think... <clears throat> I think it was really hard to describe what I thought perfect was because I felt like there was always this feeling of me searching for perfection. Yeah. It's, and whenever I finished a project, I've you seen know, you without your shirt on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, great. my God. He's perfect. Except for that one little inch in his body. He's going to have to work on that. <laughs> oh, God. No more apples. Where'd that, where'd that scar come from? Oh, he's disgusting now. <laughs> but he has nice toes. <laughs> I can't wait to hold his face in my hands and tell him I love him. And tickle his toes. I'm the best. <laughs> I feel like this is like a nightmare I had one time as a child. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So <laughs> you were searching for what perfection was. Uh, yeah, I just felt like there was always this... <laughs> It's going to be my laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that joke was so funny? So good. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm glad that this is on video. We can just, just make that a, a Sir, thing. Sir, you're getting 20 years to laugh. <laughs> I am. <laughs> All right, 15. <laughs> All right, 10. <laughs> All right, you're free to go. Oh, man, you, got, you gave me what I needed today. All right, so All right, anyway. we're going we're gonna to upload just that clip of you <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Four billion views overnight. Oh my god! I can see it. I can see it now. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so your your uh, your artwork uh, it was always searching for perfection. <sighs> Clearly not anymore. But anyway, so uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I felt like there was always that feeling of uh, trying to reach perfection, not be, not ever being able to find it. 
So yeah. like I would finish a song, I'd be proud of the song, you mm-hmm. know, like if I was working with guy, uh, like uh, guys in the band, you know, yeah, they, they like whatever their music, yeah. Uh not always. We would we would all like share stuff. How often would you allow a piece to be into a song and and be happy with it? No, every there was uh an equal <laughs> writing contribution back at psychosis. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like were you like all right, fine. It sounds good. And then really you were like I don't like it. No. Have you ever taken a psychosis song and decided to make an angels on the battlefield song and then change all the parts that you uh, didn't write? Uh, I have taken songs from uh, Psychosis and then I've left them exactly the same. 100% identical? Uh, I have shortened things ah! because it was instrumental. Ah! What, is, what is going on over there? So well, you this, changed it? I changed it to fit See? an instrumental format. The inst- well, what is the instrumental format? Well, not repeat things over and over again when there should be vocals or melody line. Well, I think you could repeat it a thousand times sometimes you do in your songs, but you need a, a you need what's known as voicings and, and, and growth in the music. You need elevation, but it doesn't necessarily mean the part. Necessary. So you're totally telling me that I need to add kazoos and banjos. Not No, because just adding things doesn't necessarily make music good. You know, you have, but I can add kazoos and banjos. I would if I were you, I would. Because the kazoo, uh, the audience for the kazoo music, <laughs> it's is so limited. Right. It's a limited area. It's know? a growing market. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you get anyway. So, uh, so you. So right, I, anyway. I felt I felt like uh, there was always just kind of like chasing our tail, trying to find perfection. So we would always write stuff. We'd be proud of it, but then we'd be like, "Oh, it's, here's the next song." But we'd be proud of that one. But we'd like after like the the joy and like the the excitement, the thrill was gone. Yeah. We'd be like, "Okay, we have to." come up with something that's even more perfect and we were just kind of more perfect. doing that so and you we, weren't writing music you were trying to write perfection yes so art 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 in general should not be perfect it can't be well nothing is perfect no but the definition of art wouldn't be perfect art is a creative effort and and it's in it's imperfection creates perfection in fact when you're drawing a person you wouldn't draw a perfect person or it would look weird you have like to, those like those uh, men in black guys from like the you know the shaved heads yeah with like the shaved no heads. eyebrows yeah, because uh, you know, uh, even even us as people, if you look at both sides of our faces, they're not even. Yeah. Um, especially Great. your toes. And uh, listen, my toes are perfectly asymmetrical. I don't know. One <laughs> foot has like four inch toes, and the other one has like one inch toes. Yeah, perfectly asymmetrical. You're an excellent swimmer in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Only one foot is webbed. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the little toe. But the opposite side hand is a flipper. Oh my god, that'd be so funny. You would totally get women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so adorable. I've seen him <laughs> naked and I put my fingers in his gills. Uh. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> but the, the idea that a song is good enough and then like, oh, we'll, we'll make a better song. I don't I don't think that's creative. I think that's just you're limiting yourself to whatever. The, you know, let's just make a great song. But a great song should come from you. I agree 100 percent. You know, but anyway, nowadays, nowadays. Now, do you uh, worry about perfection? I worry about perfection in other ways. Like what? For me, uh, my pursuit of perfection is yeah. trying to take mm-hmm. what I've written and come up with and try to make it as mm-hmm. close to what I have in my head as possible. And I think I mm-hmm. definitely fall down the uh, the anxiety <clears throat> train with letting my anxiety go, oh, it's not perfect, this thing's wrong. This so one. you're still an artist is what you're saying. I definitely let the anxiety get to me in, in, in uh, artist mode. Well, how are you ever going to grow and create if uh, you rely on those anxieties and imperfections? Well, know? that is a personal struggle that I am working through daily to uh, to get over so that I don't have to struggle. And that's the subject of our show today is that feeling. Now, you were saying, oh, back in the day before I met you, but it sounds like you have the same issues. They've been refocused. Yeah, but they're still the same thing. You're I, still trying to find perfection, and therefore you're slowing down the creative process. However, the creative process means dog in the world of business if you're going to just create for yourself and it takes you 15 20 years i mean how many times have you recorded the guitar so far <clears throat> all the way through on the, and how many guitars per song on how many songs on this newest album uh three times <laughs> three times how many guitars uh <laughs> at least three per song per song and did you double any of them uh, yes, but I was trying different techniques. Also, the, the recording process for me at this stage is just mm-hmm. learning how to record. Yeah, but you're not allowing the recording that you do to be the final because you're not happy with it. You're, you're, you're creating, because you have control, you're creating an imperf- imperfect, perfect uh, mess, meaning like you're never going to be happy with it. You have to find a moment where you're happy with it and you go, that's what it is. Because you you're you're attacking it in a sense where like 
when it goes out, it's going to be out and I can't do anything about it. But in reality, it doesn't matter. I know. <clears throat> at all. Do you think you think Michelangelo was like the David is perfect? No. No. But everyone's like, this is the David. And his penis is small. <laughs> uh, but well, he, he was it, like. The, no... <clears throat> the David penis in, in reality is probably like the size of my forearm. Well, yeah. Because he's like 80 feet tall. It's a pretty tall statue. I think it's like 13 inches tall, right? Especially if you get it at the, the shop. Yeah, they're actually, it's, uh, it's, they're, they're concerned because it's been, uh, basically the, the structure is like cracking. So the past like few years, they're like, oh, how do we keep this from breaking? Probably put it on an earthquake prone land. Anyway, so th there's no way that Michelangelo was like, the, the David is perfect. However, I, I know for a fact because the stories, Michelangelo and some other great artists used to always make fun of each other. They were always competing against one another. Really? So just like musicians and actors, -like. mm, you'd be surprised. Uh, musicians, <laughs> actors, writers, a lot of people in the entertainment industry attack other people all the time. They're always like, I'm better than you. But yet they don't think they're good enough to create. They think their creations need more work, but they're better than everybody else. And it's like, no, you're not. You're as good as you're going to be, and they're as good as they're going to be. It doesn't necessarily mean you're better than. Now, I'm not talking about technique. Technique is a whole different other story. Technique is done with practice, time, and effort. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're better than them. It just means you've been playing your instrument longer. It doesn't mean that your art is better than their art. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, that's why I'm talking solely on the creative aspect of it. You know, like Because uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, Not DiCaprio. wasn't necessarily a sculpting expert, however Michelangelo was. Michelangelo did paint. But then there's things that Leonardo did that Michael didn't do. And Raphael's trained under Michael. So there's a lot of, a lot of you know, who's better? It doesn't matter. It's, it wasn't really about that because their creative efforts were their creative efforts. But even though in those situations, they did see their works as flaws. And meanwhile, other people were like, these are amazing. And then when they spoke to other, uh, I know for a fact in this world, when you meet another musician, they definitely think they're better than, you know, oh, I'm better than them, I'm a, right? Or actors, oh, I'm a better actor than that actor. They're always, and none of those people are successful, by the way. <laughs> they're not. They're just, they're just failures. And the reason is because they're focusing on trying to be better than it. They're trying for that perfection. They're trying to let art be the sole, the sole fuel as, of as their success. As opposed to working together within their community. Yeah, work with other artists, work with other musicians. And realizing that everyone is a human being and everyone has value. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, humans don't, but... I mean, uh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. the hell's a human? If you're, if, you don't, if you're not a fae, a fairy, a vampire, a wolf, or a witch, you have zero value in my mind. I'm, I'm going to be honest, because you don't have the ability to do something cool. What about dragons? Dragons are not human. They can turn into people. Yeah, it doesn't mean they're human, though. Mm. <laughs> what the hell? What's the... The Draugr. What about Draugr's? I don't. I don't know what a drago is. Dra uh, Draugr? I think I'm saying it right. But it's, it's it's Viking zombies. Well, th those would be zombies then. But specifically Viking zombies. But, were they human? They were. And then they turned into the undead. Yes, but they now they're, they're not human. Mm. They're dead. Mm. But they aren't. They're human. they're actually what? But they aren't human. They're fey. Fey are human. Like they have humanoid bodies. Wait, wait, wait. We're talking what, about humanoids. What, what about half centaurs? <laughs> That <laughs> depends. Do they have full horse or full human? I think yeah, that's full. just a horse. <laughs> no, 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 no. Half centaur. It's a half centaur. <laughs> what are you talking? <laughs> he's half human and half horse. That's just a centaur. <laughs> no, no, he's half human. <laughs> I, I, I think you had sex with a horse. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh good times. That's good. Uh, it's such a funny moment. Uh, Anyway, it's a saying? funny moment now. It's a funny moment. Uh, anyway, um, you're still plagued by the artistic perfection brain. How does that feel? What does that feel like? Uh, stressful. Now, now, how do I get back to that and care? I mean, I can give you some coffee to help with like the stress level and the anxiety. That won't help me with anything other than make me crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already established that a cup of coffee has between two and three times as much caffeine as a uh, bottle of soda or yeah. a cup of tea. And we've also proven that... It uh, tastes disgusting. It says you. You've just had... Coffee has been taught, it's taught to you as a marketing ploy to teach you that coffee is not a part of an essential diet. Now, just keep in mind, coffee is also a market. It's, it's a, uh, a community of ideas, and it has been forced upon you, and therefore you have been uh, struck by the interest of that market to 
combine your interests with other people and, and create a community. However, I don't think you actually like coffee because I know how marketing works. In I mean, fact, you didn't like coffee until somebody you love and care about introduced you it to you a second time. Well, like a third or fourth. Or third. Or, I, I, my point has been proven uh, strongly, which is interesting because uh, that's how marketing works. All right. Because you did try coffee many a times and you were just like not a fan of coffee. And then somebody was like, this is the coffee I like. And you're like, this coffee is amazing. And then I, I could easily be like, no, it's disgusting. You're like, no, it's amazing. I go, but I don't like coffee. And I was like, that's, that's why you don't like it. And I go, well, you didn't like coffee either. I don't like bad coffee. <laughs> but you don't know what bad coffee is or good coffee. You only know what somebody you love and appreciate thinks is good coffee. So now that's your definition of good coffee. That's marketing 101. Then I have been marketed to enjoy this cup of coffee. That's what I'm saying. You don't actually enjoy it. You've been trained to enjoy it and believe that it's a part of your process. In fact, coffee, if you go back and study the history of coffee. Ooh, history lesson. That's right. Was marketed the same way bacon was to be associated with breakfast. Ooh. Coffee was marketed to be a part of your wake up process. And, and the, that's why people drink coffee in the morning to wake up. And now what does everyone say? Everybody says the same thing. Oh, don't talk to me until I have my first cup of coffee. That's a marketing thing that turned into mm -hmm. people creating the third party introduction habit. Oh, well, if I'm grumpy and I don't feel good. Maybe if I drink a cup of coffee, then I'll feel better. All right. So coffee, as just like everything, including phones, computers, whatever, the, the actual the appreciation for the item, the brand, and or the taste is all from marketing. You don't necessarily make your own decisions. That's that's how marketing works. Unless, of course, you were in the middle of nowhere and, and nothing else influenced you and you came upon something and you're like, what is this? And you ate it and you're like, that's delicious. I will call it an egg. And then you, you have created you realize the it's egg. a mushroom. And it might be a mushroom. You know. I love mushrooms. Don't eat mushrooms. But uh, that, that's the same thing with, uh, with art. You know, people create art. No one's going to like your art unless they like you. You know, and marketing has to convince them to like it, to like you, to, li to buy your art. That's just, that's just the process of it. And, you know, with today's show talking about ultimately that, you know, why don't people like my artistic effort? And it's because they don't know you. They haven't attached to you emotionally your adventure. Like you were just doing for this, right? You, you open up your phone. You're like, hey, Tom. Uh, what do you? What about podcasts or something? I don't even remember the ridiculous thing. But you mentioned podcasts or whatever. Hats. Hat, right? But it had to do. You were talking about the podcast. You Good. mentioned the word podcast, or you meant. You know what I'm saying? Like you, that's not marketing. How's that? How can I connect to that emotionally? You do a podcast, and then we want other people who don't do podcasts to be interested in a podcast. That's not how it works, right? Um, and when you do that, that's called pushing, and pushing does two things. It pushes an agenda, and it pushes people away, right? That's why I was like, just tell them to come to the show, because <laughs> that's, that's basically what you were doing. But it's the same thing with your coffee brand. It's the same thing with the hat, your choice of hat, your choice of colors, the reason you wear a certain color of outfit, the reason you play a certain kind of crappy guitar, the Schecter. Oh, you mean um, the amazing, awesome Schecter? But why is it amazing, J.D.? Uh, tell me exactly why the Schecter guitar is amazing, and I could disprove it, but you tell me why you think it's the most amazing guitar ever. I mean, it made me eggs one time. No, seriously. What may, why, why do you think it's... A, explain to me. Sell me on the fact that the Schecter is the greatest guitar ever. Go ahead, and I'll, well, I'll prove for to me, you it's shit. <laughs> but go ahead. It has been marketed to me. That is correct, but what makes you feel it's the greatest thing in the world? For me, I enjoy the, uh, the way that it is... I enjoy the versatility that I get out of the guitar for between clean channels, distortion channels, its ability to. Yeah. I'm losing. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Versatility. I like how it feels. I like the res the way it resonates. I love resonates, the tones okay. that I'm able to get out of it. The tones. All right. All right. Is it is it uh, as is out of the bag? You didn't up upgrade it or anything? I did not upgrade this guitar, no. All right. So I have a question for you. How many guitars have you played as much as the Schecter to organize an opinion? Uh, <laughs> at the same length and time you put into the Schecter. I have not played any guitar as much as I played the Schecter. But yet the Schecter is the greatest guitar ever. It is my favorite guitar, yes. But you have not even given yourself a chance to find a guitar that could potentially, possibly, without a shadow of a doubt, be better than the Schecter, which is a low-end version of a how-do-you-buy-a-guitar-and-start-playing-but-sounds-somewhat-good value. It's it's literally marketed and pushed towards the though there are high end versions of the Schecter, you definitely do not have a high end Schecter.
you have what they made so people can buy Schecter. So it's just good enough to do what it is you're saying it is, and it's 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 expensive enough so you could afford it. And now people are playing Schecters. And then because you have the Schecter, and it's the only guitar you've really put any time into, you just said it's the greatest guitar. And now anyone who likes you will go, I need to get a Schecter. And that's marketing, right? But you still haven't sold me. Why do I care about Schecter? This is what I'm saying. Just I don't because think I said it was the greatest guitar. I said you I said think, it. You said I it. said it's a great guitar, and I said that it is my favorite guitar. But it's I never said the greatest because so, that would be a, uh, an absolute, which I cannot prove. But you said it's your favorite. I did. So that's an absolute. At the moment, it is my it is my favorite. All right, but you don't think it's great. I do think it's great. So it's your favorite, and it's great. In my opinion. So yes. that makes it your, the greatest for you. For me. That's what I'm saying. But saying it is the greatest in general, I cannot prove because that would be... I'm not talking about in general. I'm saying for you. For me. I'm asking you to sell it to me and you just told me it's your favorite and it's the greatest. For me, yes. Yeah, but I'm asking you to sell it to me and you're telling me it's your favorite and greatest. And I says, all right, well, that's not... You're trying to get me to be interested in your guitar because of our relationship. That's marketing. And all you're saying is it's your favorite and it's your greatest. And you're like, oh, I like the tone. But that doesn't tell me anything. What if I've never played guitar before? What does tone mean? You're like, oh, I like the way it vibrates. You don't even know what that means, right? Like from a construction point, you might know you heard it. Somebody said guitar vibrates. You want it. What, what's the frequency you want a guitar to vibrate at to be good? That I don't know. But you said it, that was part of your interest. Did you test the vibration? I have not tested it with a measuring device, no. Oh, you just said it was part of the reason you chose the guitar. This is my point. I'm not attacking you. I'm just I'm pointing out. You don't even know why you like the guitar. Other than I like the guitar. Other than it's your favorite and it's great. Well, let's. Uh, I would like to hear your 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 reasoning for why the PRS is your favorite guitar. The same exact reason the Schecter's yours. Somebody had the PRS. I loved the way it looked and sound. I played it. I fell in love with it. I went and I tried out seven other PRSs. It was in my price range between $2,000 and $3,000. I decided that I had the money to buy it. I bought it. It has become one of my favorite style guitars. However, I don't really like to play it out because it was an expensive guitar. And I bought a shitty uh, Ibanez for like 300 bucks. And now I, I played that guitar out everywhere. And I didn't care how it sounded. I didn't care how it looked. I didn't care how it felt. I just needed the guitar to play on stage. It had nothing to do with vibrations. And to also have the range. I don't care. But what range? Oh, it had to have a seven string? Yeah, because you're, yeah, but... you're playing music that had quite a range of notes. It could have been a banjo. <laughs> As long as I could play the songs. I'm that, just that imagining the... Telmorn on stage. <laughs> but my point is, when I picked that guitar out, it had to uh, it had to be able to uh, play the songs I needed to physically, but I didn't care about anything else. I didn't try the guitar out. I wasn't like, let me listen to the sound. I was like, I have this. This is good. Fine. Even though my first guitar was a Squire. Uh, and then uh, my second guitar was a BC Rich Warlock, Ugh. which I threw out. Uh, cause I was just like, why? And I only bought it cause my friend who's not my friend anymore had a warlock bass and he wanted to play in a band with me. He was like, we should both have warlocks. I was like, like, Oh, cool. It'll match. So I only bought it because of the warlock warlock thing. But then after that, I was like, this my cousin terrible. sold me his fender and I was like, great. You're like, Oh, I have a BC rich, which is good for firewood. Yeah, <laughs> Get the marshmallows. Anyway, my point is the PRS. The reason I like it is because of the community I was in that enjoyed the PRS. I fell in love with it. But that doesn't mean it's the greatest guitar. But I will stand by it because I actually have played other guitars. I've played Gibsons for a long period of time. So I've played the Rickabacas for a but long time. You also grew up in a family where your uh, was your grandfather was and your dad, I think. Right? Well, my grandfather was the musician. My father did play in a band, but my grandfather was the jazz guy. He was yeah. the guy who played at the Apollo. And, and he he also had like a, a whole collection of stuff. He had like three or four good guitars, but like you know they're worth like you know hundred grand now. Because yes. they're in like mint condition, but uh, but he he played mostly Gibson, right? And he his first one of one of the first guitars my my grandfather got was a Rickenbacker, and he hated it. He just hated because it, it's a plastic guitar. If you ever play it, it's just there's just a ton of lacquer on the neck, right? It's like it's weird. I mean, it's a Tom Petty guitar, but um, anyway, he his cousin had the the Gibson uh, the Les Paul. And he's like, let me want to trade. And he's like, yeah. So they trade and he kept the Les Paul, which is definitely the superior guitar in that situation. <laughs> just yeah, because totally uh, now the Paul Reed Smith is a mixture of a Gibson guitar and and uh, ultimately a new design. And that's probably why I also enjoy the Paul Reed Smith. Because it's got a little bit of nostalgia. In there for it has you. a little bit of nostalgia. But I but also I can probably prove that the Paul Reed Smith 
uh, up until a certain point was a superior guitar based on how it was made by hand, uh, the quality of equipment that was utilized, the measurements aspect to uh, figure out the vibrations, the length, uh, everything that made that guitar great, uh, there's an answer for it, right? But Schecters are mass produced. How many Schecters do you know that were handmade? <laughs> I don't know. And Probably numbered, not. you know, like a very small amount. Right. But but uh, the guitar, even the guitar I got was numbered, you know, and that's the that that's how, you know, it has quality. But does that mean all Paul Reed's are quality? No, you can buy the low end Paul Reed's for 200 bucks, which were mass produced in Mexico, you know. But then there's the 30, 40,000 guitars. Do I think they're worth 30 or 40,000 dollars? Probably not. <laughs> You're like. Yeah. Is there a, are there many things that are worth thirty forty thousand dollars? I mean, no, they don't live in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like even even the dragon guitars where they had the dragon diamond inlays and stuff. They were, I was like, that's just wasted stuff. That's why the Ibanez to me, my seventh string, is my favorite guitar, and not because it's good, because it just gets the job done. And that's the difference between a musician in my mind and like an artist brain. An artist brain is like, oh, it sounds like crap, and you're like, it doesn't sound like crap. It does the job. It, if you can't do the job with what you're given, you are a terrible musician. You are a terrible artist, in my opinion, because that's what I was taught growing up, because some of the greatest musicians around me had the crappiest equipment and they still would make people. You would be like, I have to give up the instrument. I cannot play anywhere near as good as them. Like and those little like Korean kids who are like three and playing like classical pieces, like on guitars that are bigger than them. Yeah, yeah, but you know, again, that that comes down to skill and talent and stuff like that. But which is my point is when it comes to playing, it doesn't matter what kind of instrument you have. But yet, you were sold on the Schecter for whatever reason made you buy the Schecter, and you didn't actually test the market, but it became your favorite guitar. Mm. You know, that's why I'm saying like, which is linked to why people uh, will or will not buy an artist uh, art. Correct. If I if I'm a band, <laughs> no one's gonna buy my crap. If no one knows who you are, if, or no, if they have no connection to you, they have no connection to me. Same thing is why if no one goes to my movies, why would anyone go to a movie I'm in if I'm the lead? They don't know who I am. The movie itself is not gonna be that intriguing because there's only like what seven stories in the world that are just changed and uh, elevated. I mean, Harry Potter is Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is. Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one is in the Wizarding World and one is Wizarding World, but with force powers. Yeah, with uh, laser guns. Laser guns, you know, instead of laser wands, you know. <laughs> and they even had laser wands in Star Wars. They just <laughs> they cut through sort of stuff. Yeah, they they had lightsaber battles on Harry Potter. They just you know it was just tip to tip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the more i think about it the more i realize how much harry potter really is just star wars harry potter is definitely star wars now before harry potter came out oh, wait who's r2d2 ron what? is r2d2 <laughs> ron is definitely <laughs> r2d2 when harry potter first came out before it became a big thing i noticed they started marketing toys and that's because they published that book. The publishing company decided to do merchandise and build interest into this book. And that's why it became so successful and so famous. They had artwork. They had stuff they were selling before the book was even a book. That's it, genius. Of course it is. They're, they marketed the idea and then kids liked it. And then kids wanted to read the stuff. It's the same thing with Transformers. The cartoon was designed to help sell the toys. That was all. And the toys were there to help sell the cartoon. It was like a, a synergetic relationship. Kids would see the toys and be like, oh, that's cool. It's a car. And then it's a, a robot. And then they watch the cartoons like Optimus Prime. I want to own Optimus Prime. And then they go and buy Optimus Prime. And then what do they do? Oh, wow. G.I. Joe and T Transformers are in the same universe. Really? I did not know that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Cobra Command is in a couple of the episodes. Mm -hmm. So then what do they do? Oh, my God. I like G.I. Joe. And, the, uh, and they, oh, well, now I'm going to go buy Transformers or vice versa. I like Transformers. I didn't know G.I. Joe. I'm going to start buying G.I. Joe. Marketing has taught us to buy what we buy and like what we like. It's and very, also work together. It, well, it, oh, yeah. Well, that's called piggybacking when, when brands mix together. Marvel does that with 7-Eleven and stuff like that, right? Yeah, when they have like all those like the buy the, the cups. Yeah. Or with uh, with uh, Ninja Turtles too, when they did like the what's a Ninja Turtle? Uh, those things. You mean, you mean the, from out of space? Oh God, that would be like the worst thing ever. Thank you, Michael Bay, for not doing that. No, he did do it. Wait, in no. fact, the white guy was Shredder. But what happened was the marketing was getting such bad and negative. The conversation of the marketing. Yeah, but he changed it before the movie came out. Yeah, but he he filmed everything, oh, and they were editing it. 
And then they had to go back and film scenes to add lines like, what do you think they were from out of space? That would be ridiculous. Remember Meg- Megan Fox's character said that mm-hmm. April. I That's how bad that movie is. I forgot that she was April O'Neil and I just called her Megan Fox. Yeah, because it, she's not April O'Neil. Uh, <clears throat> but she, they added that and then they added a couple of things. Like, for example, they went back and filmed the I think there's three there's three scenes with a physical shredder, like where it's actually a person. And then the other scenes when it's like in the suit, that's actually the white guy. Really? Yeah, the white guy that was like that they were like he was raised by uh, the the guy from Japan, and uh, the guy from Japan turned out to be Shredder. He was Shredder because they were interviewing him in a couple interviews before the movie was finalized, and it would say playing Shredder and then his alternate name. And he even talked about it. He's like, "Yeah, this is great. I get to play a villain. I love playing villains. You know, I, you know, Shredder's like a big icon." And then next thing you know is they brought in a new guy. And then for the second movie, they brought in an actual actor, actor, even though the first shredder was an actor, actor. He was from um, there was a show that lasted like three seasons. I can't remember. He played like a gay Asian guy on the show, but he was like really tough. And uh, like Asian. He was a gay Asian. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Anyway, he's a great he's a good actor, but he wasn't like well known. You know, he wasn't yeah. like a really well known. Anyway, I'm assuming he's like younger and like coming up kind of at the time. Yeah, at the time. <clears throat> But anyway, that's conversation of brand influencing the brand. So sometimes there's things we want to represent as a brand to get people to buy onto us emotionally, but it doesn't necessarily work out because the community, the conversation is negative. The same thing we talk about with McDonald's, where they're like, McDonald's is bad for you. So now they just push healthy foods and they made Mc- Ronald McDonald go from being chubby to skinny. And then they got rid of them. They did get rid of them. Yeah. Even though they have the Ronald McDonald Foundation. Well, that's because they had that for a long time. Yeah. You know, um, and they probably did that because their food causes cancer as per research. Oh. And they were like, let's let's and they have to have a warning when you go up to the counter. They do. They have a warning. We are not responsible for uh, any cancer you might get from eating our food, <laughs> which is insane. Anyway, back to the artist brain. I think like me, I create because I want to not and not because I need it to be perfect. I don't care about perfection. I used to when I was younger and I realized more time was wasted on perfection than creating. So my question to you is, did, was it you coming to that realization of wasting time? Is that what got you to uh, step away from searching for perfection or is it something else? Um, well, a, a couple of things. First, I realized perfection for me was always competing with other people and you can't do that. Your competition should be with yourself. You should never try to be as good or equal to someone else because they just are who they are. It's their style. Like there were people that would draw that made me not want to draw. Yet I was at an expert level when I was doing illustrations, when I was working in comics, when I was, you know, when I had my opportunities with different companies, Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was very good at what I did, but I was working alongside people that made me feel like I was starting out, but people still were asking to hire me. And my brain was like, well, I'm not good enough, but I was because they were asking to hire me. I mean, that makes sense. So I had to have been good for them, you know, Um, and that got me thinking. And then uh, another thing that really uh, convinced me is when I started really working in the music industry, when I started working in studios or like working along other musicians. Was this was this while you were still in Tenebra? Was this after Tenebra? It was was a mixture of both. I started working in the industry while I was in Tenebra. But I, I'm just asking because you were talking about like being in the studios. I don't know if like this was something that happened like after Tenebra had like ended, or if you started coming no, to this, this realization. This is both. Tenebra. This is both. Uh, I already knew my music was awesome, but I didn't. Uh, to me, it was awesome for me. Like I, it wasn't like my music's awesome and everyone will like it. It was like no, my music's awesome because I'm creating something from nothing, and that's good enough for me. And that's where my perfection ended. I was like, I like it done next song you see how quickly i write songs i don't I linger on you've, stuff. you've literally gone outside to walk the dog for 10 or 15 <laughs> minutes come back and i haven't you're like i have a whole song done you're like what yeah, yeah all the instruments are done everything's done. you didn't even touch a guitar <laughs> well let's see i'm a composer so i write <laughs> in my head <laughs> um done. but i but i write i purposely and i'll tell you why in a second Please i purposefully uh stop myself from going any further than where i the moment i'm happy with something it's good you're done yeah i don't need to <laughs> Do I fine tune things sometimes? Yeah, but I think it's over the course of time and not necessarily like, let me just spend another eight days on this song. Like when uh, like when you uh, you did the transition from Tenebra to Altan, you did some of like the reworkings. <clears throat> like you'd be like, oh, time has passed. Let me adjust it. 
I did that for two reasons. The first one was because <clears throat> I wanted to connect my new path with my old path. That was the first thing. So I took some Tenebra songs and I brought them over to Altanian. But I also wanted to show a new style. So Altanian was a more refined style than, say, Tenebra's more gruff, rough, straightforward. It had a lot of, like... It, to me, I think Altanian is prettier and Tenebra was dirtier. And, and that's not a negative thing. It's just Tenebra was more raw. I, I see what you're saying. Like, whereas, <laughs> like, Tenebra would be... Tenebra would be uh, the Metallica, you know, leather jackets, tough guys. And yeah. then Altanian is the refined dream theater, you know, sipping a glass of wine. Yeah, I would I would agree <laughs> with that. Uh, and in doing so. So that's my second reason is I wanted to change some of the parts. I kept some of the stuff the same just sort of be like, this is that song. Gotcha. Uh, but I changed stuff not because I wanted to be better. It was, but it because it was a different style. It was a different, was a different style. presentation. Yeah, and I was saying, look, I'm evolving. And I, I still have songs that I'm putting on this album where I altered them slightly only because it's a different style. And, you know, um, was that your question? Daniel? Yes, that oh, was my okay. question. So to, to answer the original part of it, though, where it's like what convinced me to not have the perfection was while I was in those studios, I would see musicians and producers and writers just spend months, years, and when I say years, I mean tens of years on songs. That's insane. Or albums. And they would go from, I, I were, so I, I, I'm not going to give his name, but I, the, I, you know who I'm talking about. I, the guy who did the grass is green on the other, side, grass is blue. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that song took like 10 or 15 years to record. And I was with him because, like, I, I you know, I, I worked with him and he yeah, taught you, me things. You've known him for a while, for a long time. Uh, but he would take me to the studio with him and uh, I would learn, you know, and I had lots of family who owned tons of fucking major studios, you know, and uh, uh, I would sit there and he'd go from studio to studio to studio to studio to studio, go through new musicians, go buy different guitars. <laughs> he would put the, you know how you just spent a couple of days with the uh, the microphone on your amp? I've seen that. I think that's insane what you did. And he would do that. He would go, all right, I like it. All right, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change the guitar. All right, I'm going to move it back one inch. All right, all right, I'm going to go back to the original guitar. All right, I'm going to move it three inches. Uh, all right, wait, I'm going to play in another room while the amp is in this room so my presence doesn't affect that. That's what, what you did is going to turn into. And to me, when you do that, the same way, the same thing people in the studio told me, they go, that guy, because I don't want to say his name, that guy doesn't know what he wants. So how can you record? How can you go into a studio or record something if you don't know what you want? And if you're going to go to find what you want, then you don't understand what you're doing. And if you don't understand what you're doing, how are you going to find perfection? Which makes sense. Right? And this guy, and then you know what he would do? He'd go to another studio and everything he did at that first studio, he would do again because he's like, well, this is a different room. Well, that just makes no sense to me. But you're doing it. I I'm just uh, learning how the microphone works. Exactly. Because I was I wasn't trying to like just re I wasn't trying to record all the stuff. I was literally just testing the microphone because I didn't I didn't know uh, everything that I, I I've been researching. Yeah. Uh, like they're explaining stuff, but I, I wanted to see what it sounded like with just a quick demonstration. I wasn't doing like a full song. I'm not saying you're trying to record. You're trying to find a sound that you like, or you wouldn't have said I like this setup. But the thing is, you don't know why you like that setup. And that's what makes it difficult to be someone who's recording their own stuff. You don't mm. know why you like that sound. The same reason you don't know why you like the Schecter. You just think it's your favorite and it's the greatest. But you, you oh, I like the vibration. Why do you like the vibration? What is the vibration supposed to be? How does it influence the guitar? It's like our conversation with the neck, where I knew you knew nothing about the guitar neck and the reason the neck looks like it does. And yet you said, it's so the hand is comfortable. And I almost lost my mind. I couldn't sleep for three days because I'm like, this guy. <laughs> This guy is telling me because you were wrong. You were a hundred percent wrong. But like in my mind, you believed it, and I was like, I was like, wow. I remember being there. Like I, you're basically a young version of me. If somebody didn't, you know, like they taught me, but I didn't listen. You know, like I only took things I liked, right? You know, but like in my head, it took me like ten years or well, seven years to hear everything. 
So like I was being told stuff, and then like on the seventh year, it was like, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, oh. <laughs> Did like a door open? You got hit with like an avalanche? It happened when I was watching the bands when I was along the wall, and I was like, why are they making fun of it? And they were like, we should be up there. And I was like, yeah, but how did they get up there? And it was just everything just came in, and from that point on, I was just a whole different person. I, literally like that. Within before the song even ended, I my entire personality changed because I just stopped being that person because I didn't want to be that person anymore. But anyway, going back, going back. I just I thought that was crazy that he spent that kind of time. And when we went in to record, I would record like that. Boom, 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 boom. And everyone else in the band couldn't. You know, the drummer three times record his drums. The bass player didn't even practice his stuff, even though he said he was practicing it. And then he didn't know it. I feel like there that tends to be a uh, a thing with musicians that you tend to find is a lot of them don't uh, actually either they don't try practicing. Or they're just like, eh, I can't play this music. I refuse to play with artists or musicians because <laughs> they think they're both, and they're they're not they're neither. Look, you either can play the instrument, or you can't play the instrument. If you can play the instrument, you want to play the instrument. That's it. And if you don't want to play the instrument, you're not going to practice. You're not going to be prepared. You're not going to change your strings. You're not going to learn this stuff. And if you're not doing that kind of stuff, there's more involved. Then you're not a real musician or artist in my head. Because if you were, you want to do it. We're not talking about business right now. We're just talking about art brain. Me as an artist, I want to create. If somebody was like, and not not the thing we're working on, because that's, to me, I'm proving a point. And it's that like you talk to a bunch of artists and every single one of them flopped and failed, just like I said they would, because they're artists. Period knows. And Imperial yet, does know. yet I got stuff back to you before any one of them. And You're literally the only person that's gotten back to me yet. And I took a long time. Yeah. On yeah. purpose. <laughs> Well, it's back to you now, and you're still taking a long time. And I'm still ahead of everyone else. You are still ahead of everyone else. Do I want to finish the song? Yeah, but I can finish it like that if I want. But going going to something a little bit more interesting is that if I got hired or a friend asked me to play a show, I would have that stuff down. There's no doubt in my mind that I would have it down because I would want to do it. I would want to play because I'm playing a show or I'm recording on an album or something. It's just in my mind. I'm being asked to do what I do. So why wouldn't I do it? Yet there are people that say yes to things. Like how many musicians did you ask? Five? One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, including you, seven. All right. So seven, really six. Eight. Oh, eight, all right. Eight. So now seven. Because uh, I don't count. I don't count in that. Uh, those people, to me, why would they say yes? Why would you say yes? That's a really good question. You say yes when you want to do something. But if it's not what you love doing, then you're going to say no. But they said yes to something because your friendship, which is branding and marketing, right? But they didn't follow through. And they didn't follow through. And in my mind, that doesn't make them a true artist. And again, we're not talking about business. We're just talking about artist branding right now. That doesn't make them an artist because if you love doing what you're doing, you're going to do it no matter who... Oh, I get to draw with you. I get to do a comic book with you. I get to act with you. I get to write with you. I get to do music with you. You get to do the thing that you like to do with someone that you enjoy. Yeah. So why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do it? It's like when we do the acoustic stuff. I don't want anything beyond us learning the song. And to me, that's fun because we're just we're just we're doing fun. It. We're playing the song. Yeah. And th and, that's and you created something. Well, besides that. But then, you know, it's like when you came to me we and you're just, like, we just hey, off the blood before do you want to learn down. this? No, JD came to me and he goes, do you want to learn this song? I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then it turned in, he was going to do like a recording of it. And then I had to play to a, tr a, a track. And so I had to learn it perfect uh, just to stay on key. Or, I mean, on beat. Then then it was going to be where we're going to film it in several different ways. And then it was gonna, and I was just like, all right, well. To yeah. be fair, it was literally <laughs> just you have to play it on an electric guitar to to. uh a backing track of drums well it started hey let's record us playing this song yes right to all right there's going to be a a, a a a backing track uh, and it wasn't originally just drums don't lie to the audience okay and bass no and guitar you want to play have us playing with the other guitars remember because we had a conversation about you like i'll take the guitars out then remember we were talking about that and I was like, you don't have to take the guitars out leave them in i don't give a crap oh well, the the original idea was to play to just uh a track that I had, but then I was going to use. We ch I changed it because you felt uncomfortable doing that, so that was just going to. What play was the to, original thing? Well, it's just the original final product of one of the songs, and yeah. then I was going to take 
the reworked ones and just use the MIDI that I had so I could take out the guitar. So we just had our guitars. Yeah, but the first thing you said was the first thing you said to me. And I was like, all right, well, that's that's not fun. Like, But to me, the way you sound is like, let's learn a song and play together. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then it was like, I have to now I have to be fucking I have to be absolutely perfect to play along with a track, which I don't want to do. Right. And then and then it like changed to something else. Then it was something. Then it was like, no, no, we're it, it was going to go. You were going to actually post it. And then you're like, no, no, it's just an exercise. I'm just doing it to learn how to record. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll do it. That I'm back on. I'm back in. And then you're like, and if it's good, we'll put it up. And I'm like, well, now it has to be, you know, like now what's not good. So no, I have to play it perfect, or now you won't post it. Well, so there was said, a lot when of I, uh, when I said you know, whether it was good or not, it was whether or not my ability to cut together and edit a video was going to be the thing. What do you mean a video? How are we going to post it? How many cameras were you going to use? Two, like we've been doing. Oh for my you. god, you can't cut two cameras together and, and be like, "That's good. I'm going to post it." I See? mean, I probably could. That's why. That's why. I, uh, that's why my my f want to do it the fun just vanished because it was no longer us having fun. It was like, all right, well, I, I understand now that that is not fun for you where it would have been fun for me. It would have been fun for you to have me as a puppet. <laughs> I would have been your monkey. <laughs> like, I don't want to get a little puppet. You now. I'm just saying, but, but again, you know, like if I asked you to play acoustic, you can say, I don't want to, cause it's not going to be fun with me. And I'd be like, all right, fine. But to me, like the exercise is just, I'm going to write this song in less than three days. I'm going to just sit downstairs. I'm going to literally play guitar and film it done. Like that was, that was to me, that was the exercise that was fun, uh, you know, and, and uh, that's like rawness that to me that that's perfection is because it's just, just do it. Even the last thing we filmed, it wasn't even that good. And to me, I was like, you know, it's good, you know? And I was like, do you want to do it again? No, fine. Let's just keep going. Like that to me, that, that is the difference between an artist brain and like, uh, I think a true creative mind is like, it's done. We did it. Move on. But like to sit there and I'd have to like get it so perfect to a click track. You and in my to get it so perfect to a click track, just play along with the click track. But, but the thing is, I would have to learn it to the click track. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just me playing anymore. I'm no longer playing. And for me to do that in a quote unquote live situation while we record a video to me was insane because I was that's I'm like, why don't we just play it? Just play it. You know, like, why do we have to record it? You wanted to record us playing it live. while playing to a click track and filming it and in my head. I'm like, why don't we just record it? And then we'll just film us playing it with the music playing. And now it doesn't you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to the, the fun was out because now I'm being filmed. There's two takes. I have to play perfectly on the MIDI. I have to perform for the camera, you know, and then it's like, it has to be it. To me, you were filming a recording session as a video because it was quote unquote live. And to me, I, you lost me somewhere. You, the creative perfection I brain that did you were throwing on me was just too much. And I couldn't handle it. It was just, all right. So then it doesn't need to be perfect. It's not that it even needs, like if you're going to record me recording, into a studio setup i'll just record the guitar alone <laughs> all right with nobody watching you could watch but i mean i don't need a camera on me and then when it's good enough for you which will take like 38 takes all right then if you want i will go downstairs and i will sit or stand however you prefer holding a guitar that it's not plugged in and we could sit there and play the guitar to the music blasting on speakers and film us. And then that's the, there you go. It's a playthrough. Because then now, now we're having fun. But before, that's a lot of pressure for something that's supposed to be fun. Well, I'm sorry that you felt like there was a lot of pressure. There was, was a lot of my, pressure. Uh, that was not my intention. Tell me what's not pressure about that. I got to live perform in front of a camera to make a video while recording a, to be crisply and beautiful to a click track we, and then you won't post it unless you can edit two videos <laughs> perfectly which is an excuse by the way the bs mute is going off is an excuse to say well if you don't like my playing you just weren't comfortable with your edit of the video right and that, that's what that so wait, 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 time out go ahead at what point at anywhere in this entire discussion did you ever think that there you're i wouldn't be satisfied with your 
playing. Because it, wait, I, wait, wait, time out. Yeah. If, I, if that was ever an issue, I wouldn't have asked you to perform with me on the video. Well, you said it was just for practice and not for people. So that's why I figured you asked me. I wouldn't have <laughs> asked you if I didn't feel comfortable or confident in your abilities to But it's just play practice, music. you said. It was just for, for you to learn something. Yeah, but it's... So why would you be comfortable with me playing it? Because I would still need to feel comfortable with your ability to play the song in order for me to practice, pro practice properly. I disagree. I would let Says somebody you. who couldn't play all my stuff if it was for nothing other than me to learn how to use the recording item. Uh, you don't judge a person. If you need to, if, if I'm learning something, I don't care on the other person's skill level. I just need somebody as a monkey or a puppet to do what they got to do so I can learn the skill level on the item. If I'm learning how to record, I don't need you to be the greatest guitarist in the world. I just need you to go da 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 I don't care about the, the quality of the player because those are two different factors. So I think we've we've established where your your uh, artist brain anxiety has gone because at no point anywhere in this entire conversation uh -huh. in the weeks since I've yeah. originally brought up this thing, uh, there's no way I would ever question your ability to play any instrument. No, I understand that part. So like, I, so you're, you're saying if we do it, if we do, I it, can solo over the song. Yes. And I could just play different parts if I want. Yes. Well, if, it, if, ah, if you're going to change, ah, 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 if you're going to change, it's just for fun. If we're going to just for fun, if we're playing one song and you start playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I'm going to be confused. What go, if it's hey. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star within the, the, the key and also the feel and, and, and rhythm of the song? If it fits, I will laugh and it will go in. <laughs> and you'll post it? I will post it. All right. Then I don't need to learn your song. I'll just play what I want. This is, I'll do it right now. Get the guitars. But do you see the face you're making? That's how I know you're BSing me. Because I'm messing no, with I'm you. No, I'm making that face no. because I know that you will do it. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I just think it's funny. No, you, <laughs> you, he was getting mad at me for the longest time because I would just be like, well, why don't we just do this? And he's like, we're not doing spoken word. And I was, but you said I could do anything. And you're like, oh, I thought you were joking. And I was like, I wasn't joking. Yeah, but I literally just said you can do it. All right, so I'm I can do that. Yes. Well, then why do we? All right, let's do it. I'm ready. All right. Well, we're in the middle of the podcast right now. Afterwards, you want to do it? Let's eat and let's go do it. <laughs> well, not today. I got to film the uh, the YouTube thing for our for our YouTube channel. You know, oh, yeah. you know how I work uh, seven days a week just to, you know make sure we can make millions. What the hell is a seven? Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could do art like you. I don't have time. You know, you do art at night when I'm in bed <sighs> for like thirty <laughs> minutes. Definitely not thirty. minutes. I don't get a lot of time to work on my creative aspects. Mm. I don't. I I feel I don't have the right to do it yet. Mm. Once I once we are making. Uh, 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 money in a sense where like uh, you know it's just creating a flow of income uh, then you feel you have earned the right to make yeah then I'll sit there and I'll measure a microphone for a whole day like until now I'm like I have to write the scripts for the YouTube I gotta edit this I gotta do that I gotta do the SEO I gotta you know like in my head I, I don't I, I'm, I have one clear path and nothing is gonna stop that path I have no interest in anything else except for when I literally have nothing else to do. Which never happens. No, no, like late at night. You're like, oh, you work on it at night. The only reason I do that is because if my brain isn't doing something, I go insane. And when I'm like, well, I don't want to put an hour or two into something. Let me just work creatively on something and I'll work whatever. And then, you know, until someone comes and says, hey, we're going to bed or you want to watch something. Then I go, yes. And I'm able to just shut off. I'm like, yep, no problem. I don't care where I am in it. It's, the, you know, because it's literally it's the fun. I call it busy time, like busy work, like busy work to me. It doesn't matter if it gets done. I'm just doing something so I don't go insane just because if I sit in silence, I, I won't even it, it'd be horrible. So if you were to sit in what like the, the room that has like almost complete silence, you would literally just go insane unless I was meditating and there was a purpose to it. But if it was just like I had nothing to do, like if I was in there as an experiment, I could do it. But if I was if that was my like, let's say I finished working. And then I appeared in that room. I would go crazy. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> but like even like I exhaust myself so I could go to bed. Like I'll, I stay up until I can't stay up anymore because I just, I don't want to have any moment of not of a pause because I just would go crazy, you know? So, but I don't, I don't have the leisure like you do. I, you know, you, you work and create and I, and I envy that because I don't have the ability to say, uh, 
you know, even my therapist is like, well, you got to find time, you know, you got to say yes to you. And I go, I am saying yes to me. Everything I'm doing leading to my freedom is a yes for me. And I don't, but I don't, if I say yes to these other things that I know have zero, they're just, they're not, they don't do anything for me right now other than I enjoy doing them. That's it. And like my brain can't comprehend not, that's why I like when people are like, oh, I worked or I worked 13 hours today. I need a break. And I'm like, I'm just starting. Like even at the theater, like people are like, you're, you've been here all day. Aren't you tired? It, I'm not allowed to be tired. I'm trying to grow a company. I'm trying to have a career. I'm trying to, I don't want to go work and sell uh, ACs or pools or, or uh, do groceries or, or work, you know, like. I, Hi, I'd like a baker's dozen of pools, please. Yeah, can I have a baker's dozen? <laughs> you know, and people don't understand in this business, our creative side, we rely on that to make us money or a career. And when you do that, when you strive for that perfection, when you're like, well, my song or my acting or my movie or my book, that's going to make me money. And you're, you're like, no, it's not. The reason it won't is because you're focusing on the art. Should you create? Absolutely. Create. Do whatever you got to do to create. But don't create to make money. Create to create. Yeah. Create with the artist. Brain. Love what you're creating. Don't create for other people. Create for you. What, what do you love doing? Do it. But when that's done, shut your artist brain off and go, how do I make money with this? And it's not the thing you created. It's literally everything else. It's the networking, building, cultivating relationships. It's marketing, designing a brand, getting people to buy into it. You know, There's a lot that goes into running a business. And if you're a creative type, your business is to get people to buy into that. But if you're just like, hey, I wrote a new song or I wrote a book or I had that, people are like, great. You'd get the 10 friends you have. Yeah. Oh, that's I love it. Yeah. And you won't get real feedback. Your mom is never going to be like, oh, that's terrible. They're going to be like, oh, that's nice. Can Did you autograph this for me? Autograph this. Are you going to work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Don't forget to bring home milk. I opened a theater, a 6,200 square foot theater. And my mom literally said to me, well, how do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the theater. And she they goes, yeah, but you? But, but you like, do you get paid? <laughs> I was like, yes, mom. Uh, yeah, I pay myself a salary. You do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. How? Well, people spend money here. Why? <laughs> I don't know, Mom. I don't. I don't. Have know. you been to a play before? Yeah. Did you pay tickets? Yeah. That's funny. Well, when when I when my parents came to see the place the, before it was built. Oh, yeah, because you were you, they saw when it was being constructed. Or, be, right before the day before it was going to be built, all the, there was like a pile of sand inside. All the stuff oh, was yeah, like yeah. piled up. And my later on, I found out my dad was like, "What's how? Where is he going to do with this? This is a mess in there." And then when they saw it done, they were like, "Oh my god, this is beautiful!" And then my mom was like, "Well, what are you going to do? How are you going to make money?" I was like, "I don't know." I haven't had a job job in so long. I can't remember. And still, to this day, my parents are like, well, what do you do for a living? I go, I make money. Which is funny because like your mom and dad interact with all of your social media and see what you're doing. Well, that's the thing. I don't I don't use social media like I tell people to use social media because I don't care. <laughs> I have literally zero interest in selling anything that I make. I, I'm really I'm a, I'm a, a shaker and a baker. Like I make things happen, and also a candlestick maker. I am a candlestick maker. I'm the guy that people hire to make things happen. I'm the guy that like I don't really care about being like the spot. I don't care about being in the spotlight. I care about I I actually care about elevating the spotlight for others. Like that's pretty much been my whole life. I mean, you've known me for seven years. That's literally what I do. Like I'm always pushing other people in front. What ends up happening though is people know me more. Why? Because I'm the one doing the actual work. You know, if you're a comic and you come to me and you go, "Hey, I want to be a successful comic," and I go, "We have to do these things," and you go, "Great," and then I'm the one doing it and you're not doing it, and then you're like, "Everyone knows you and no one knows me," and I'm like, "Well, like, you're not doing these things that I'm doing. You need to do these things," and they're like, "Oh." You know, and that's why it's hard to beat work with teams. And that's why I just like to get paid to do what I do now. You want you want help? Just pay me. I'll do everything that needs to be done, but I'll do it in your brand, your name. I won't I want to be associated with it and I'll help you. And they go, oh, OK. And then like, you know, <laughs> I don't, don't want to. People don't they get don't my name know. off of it. You get, get my name. Off of it. But like Team Rise Together or Top of the Bottom Pile or Tenebra or any anything I've ever worked on. It's. I always go in with team mentality. Let's grow together. And then like it turns out to be I'm the one growing and I don't know how I'm growing by myself since there's money, other water people. And sunlight. Yeah, money, money and sunlight. But the thing is, uh, 
like let's say top of the bottom pile like you know one of the big things with that was i said let's not perform for a year and they were like why not i was like because performance has nothing to do with success let's focus on building and cultivating relationships let's focus on developing our brand and and, exp- and growing that brand you know to do everything we have to do uh let's practice uh increasing your skill level as a business owner let's let's teach you guys how to run your businesses you know and i was doing all this for free like i took them under my wing and you're basically saying hey we have to build up the brand and the awareness and the demand for the art that we're going to be creating in the next case is uh you know the comedy yeah and i said i said people will come to us and they didn't believe me and i think it was like three months three months or six months it was something ridiculous it was a quick amount of time apa management came to us holy crap and we hadn't even performed we didn't send them anything. We didn't perform. It was nothing. And they were interested in us. They heard about us. They knew what we were doing. They loved it. They said, keep it up. We want to see where you guys go. We're definitely keeping an eye on you. That, Ooh, that's insane. That is definitely insane. Right? And then we started going to the city. And what happened when we started going to the city? We started building friends. And what happened? Hey, do you guys want to perform on the show? Sure. You want to perform on the show? Sure. Yeah. And now we were getting asked to perform on shows. And now we didn't have to bring anybody. Why? Because they didn't, we weren't saying, "Hey, can we go on the show?" And they go, "Yeah, it's a five-person bringer." They were going, "Do you want to perform on this show?" And you're going, "Yes," because at that point, you have the leverage to be like, "We have the leverage," you know, because we didn't need to perform. And people were like, "Why are you guys not performing anywhere?" And I was like, "Oh, we perform all over the place. We're just not doing shows." And they're like, "Why not?" Well, we don't market our shows. We're not good enough, quote unquote, to ask people to come see you're us. Not big enough. Didn't well, have enough yeah, yeah, we're brand. not we're not big enough with the brand to say. And uh, over the course of the first year. Uh, because we were getting so much action, the team, not me, the, the team, team was like, we should do a show together. We should do a top of the bottom pile show. I'm like, why? It's a waste of time, money, uh, resources, you know? And they're like, no, we're doing great. I was like, we're doing great amongst the community, but we're not doing great as a brand. And uh, so we put a show together and who showed up? A couple friends of our friends. Yeah. And after that show, they're like, we get it. Whatever you need us to do, we're going to just follow what you tell us to do. And we maintained what we were doing, but slowly but surely what happened, my name started getting bigger. One person said, I need my wings. To, I, I got to spread my wings. I need. Were those the exact words? Yeah, I got to spread my wings. I have I have the email somewhere. And I was like, all right, fine. Have fun. And then the, and then it was just everybody. Everybody it was always about them. One person was like, you know, I have a career. I got a good. And I was like, and he's like still a very close friend of mine. He's like one of my best friends. I love him. But he he, he shifted <clears throat> careers is what you're saying. Yeah, he's like, because he just graduated from college with a degree. And he's like, I could get a job doing this. I'm going to just do this. And I was like, go do what you got to do. You know, like the time he would have had to put into his comedy career versus what he just put his time into. It didn't yeah. make any sense. And now he's doing great. You know, he has a high position in what he's doing. Well, Mazel tov. you know, and he's still able to do what he's doing with the COVID, which is great. And, he, you know, he's doing very well. But the other people, every one of them, it came down to even one one of them who I still like as a person was uh, who I'm friends with was still like, well, no, uh, I do. It's it's all about me. I you know I I, I can't I can't you know it's it's hard for me to share the wealth of that uh, kind of like energy, which is ridiculous because you have like so many like yeah. uh, groups like what is it uh, with the Redneck Comedy Tour? It's the, like the four guys. It's Jeff Jeff Foxworthy, uh, Ron White. I heard the cable guy and the other dude. <laughs> I forgot the other dude's name. But like they always go out together and it just seems like Well, not it, anymore, but well, at not, the time but, they did, yeah. Yeah, but like they, they banded together to make that experience. They were a team yeah. and they always were just like working with one another. And it always just seems that they like at least when they first were coming up, that they were a team that supported that. Well, they got to a certain point where they were big enough, but uh, Larry the cable guy was the was um technically the the newest person in the scene. And he closed that tour out. And the reason was because his brand was so big. Jeff Foxworthy, who was definitely bigger than all of them at one point or another, was like, no, I'll just host you. You close the show out. And they was like, all right. And that's that's how powerful brand is. The new guy on the block had the strongest brand and he got to close out with Ron White and, and, and Foxworthy. Come on. Like and that's the point. Brand outweighs your interest in comedy. Larry the Cable Guy also was a character he designed that was a five to ten minute bit within a longer set. And he would call into the radio show as Larry the Cable Guy. And that turned out to be something where he almost won the mayorship as a joke. <laughs> right? Because the oh, radio yeah. station was like, we want to pay you to do these spots. And That's then really funny. They were like, we want to pay you to do a mayor run campaign as a joke. And he still almost won the mayorship. That's insane. Right. And he and that's not his, his real name isn't Larry the Cable Guy. And it was just a small bit, but he 
it was a brand and he built on that brand he established a brand now he's a multimillionaire. i mean um, that's a very funny brand is, is a funny brand. Uh, but my point is with art is uh, artists focus on art and they have to perfect that art and it has to be the best art and it has to be better than everyone else's and sometimes that art holds them back from starting i have a question oh good what is it you think motivates a lot of artists to be stuck in that that artist mentality or that that chasing of perfection and that uh that emphasis on the art before them as people like what what is it do you think that keeps some people stuck in there and yet there's you know other people are able to break out and actually have a distinction between artist brain and business brain lack of knowledge Lack of knowledge of the business. Artist brain will always stay where they are if they don't know how the business runs. Once you start understanding how the business runs, you realize when I create, it's art brain. When I'm ready to make money, it's business brain. I cannot connect those two. I cannot allow my art to be influenced by the business and vice versa. Meaning, if I'm going to create a song, I should never think, how do I get this on the radio? I should write it so it's you know, four minutes or three minutes and 60 seconds. Because if that's the case, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody never would have gotten written. That, well, it's not that that would have never gotten written. It would never gotten put on the radio. Well, I'm saying if, if Freddie Mercury had thought that way, oh, it never yeah, would have yeah, gotten yeah. written. Yeah, and that they, that song actually didn't become famous. Until afterwards, until Wayne's, Wayne's World. World. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, uh, if your brain is focused, uh, if your artist brain is saying, all right, I'm going to write a book. What's, what's popular right now? What's popular mm. right now? And then you say, all right, let me follow that formula. Like you're not creating anything real, anything you're creating, true. You're creating yeah. the Kmart version of whatever it is that you're copying. Yeah. And you know what? You might actually write something better or you might create something better than the original thing you're basically inspiring yourself through. Uh, but you don't necessarily have the brand to sell it. Right. And that's where that's where the business brand comes in. How do I create such a valuable brand? and build and cultivate relationships within that community to allow people to be interested in what I'm doing. Most artists want people to be interested in them, but they don't put the time into being interested in those people. You don't create, you know, like how often do you see artists post on their social media, their adventure for people to grow into and be interested in? But you, most of the time uh, that what I've seen is people just posting, oh, I have a new thing coming out. That's right. Even it, people who are uh, doing well, you know, a lot of it is just, oh, this is what I'm doing. They, are, they post their accolades, but they don't or, yeah. or you know, hey, I just got engaged. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, here's my kids. Here's my kids. Um, but I do want to say the business brain shouldn't touch the art brain either. The business brain shouldn't say, you know, well, you know, maybe I should see if people actually like the music before I start marketing it. No, just market it. Because it doesn't matter. In fact, when I because I, I, I think a good example is the fact that uh, like I've mentioned a couple of times on the show already is the fact that I'm not a fan of reggae whatsoever. And I don't like Bob Marley's music at all, but Bob Marley is one of my, you know, my business models. Cause he literally is a living embodiment of everything that you teach. Yeah. Well, posthumously living. <laughs> <laughs> posthumously. <laughs> uh, who's Bob Marley? No, no. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, that, you know, that, that's the thing. Like, you don't have to like something to be inspired by the person who runs the business. Yeah, itself, but again, but, like I've, I've bought into the brand, just not on to the music side. Yeah. Well, you bought into the business uh, uh, savviness of Bob Marley, but not necessarily his mission. I don't be I don't believe you believe in his brand, because if you did, your life would follow certain philosophies. You'd probably that smoke weed a little bit more. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, at all. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Fun fact, I've never smoked weed. But weed has smoked you. I mean, that is true, mainly because I'm Jewish. Well, you've been in rooms where it was filled with pot smoke. So yes, you know, that so I have. I've walked out of every room that has been like that. You're like, nope. I was like, oh, pot? <laughs> People are like, where are you going? Away. I, I want you to, I want all of you to have fun. So <laughs> I'm I'm going to have fun not being here. Bye. Everybody. You're a loser. You're you're bringing the party down. No, I'm I'm leaving. So I don't. So you guys and girls could have fun. Oh, you should do drugs. You shouldn't do drugs. Hey, don't tell us what to do. I'm just responding to what you told me to do. <laughs> Did I once say don't do drugs? No. Well, then why are you asking me to do drugs? Have you, you and my question is, have you actually had a conversations like that? All the time. Really? All the time. It wasn't until I was in my 30s where I stopped being around those people completely, including bars, where people were like, you should drink. You want to drink? Let me buy you a drink. I don't drink. You don't drink and you're in a metal band? 
what a loser. And I'd be like, well, I don't think the- I've ever been. Uh, uh, I don't think I've ever had someone go, "Oh, you should do like you should do drugs and try to like make me feel bad to do drugs." Well, I've definitely I've had friends that obviously have done drugs and yeah. like, whatever, and they'd be like, "Hey, do you want to try this?" And I've been like, "No, I'm good." And they're like, "Okay." I mean, there there are some good friends. There there are some friends that you know like we'll joke around, you know, we'll say names back and forth, but it wasn't like a serious. Oh, you should do this. It was just like oh. well, to me that that's that that is actually a form of uh, the basically saying you're stupid for not doing this. Even though they were "quote unquote" joking, that is a form of abuse. When mm. people when people say, "Oh, I'm just joking," that is actually a form of uh, of abuse. We insult each other all the time. Oh, yeah, but I'm joking. <laughs> we never say we're joking, though. We know we know that we don't mean what we say. I don't have to justify my attack. I'm just playing around. I'm just playing around. I don't really mean that. I don't have to say that because you know you know the value of our friendship. But if you're going, why are you being why why are you being so mean? And I go, I'm not being mean. I'm just joking. Oh, well, that's I'm abuse. Not, yeah, I've not had that situation. I'm saying like I've had friends where like you and I have like the you know we say stuff to each other like jokingly we know it. Yeah, but if I'm saying stuff like that to get you to smoke or do drugs or drink, and you're not, and I'm like, oh, you're just being an idiot. And you're like, huh? Oh. They're 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 <laughs> they're chipping at your wall, buddy. And they would do that to me, and I didn't care if they were joking or not. I didn't want to be around that. Fair enough. I'm an idiot, or I'm stupid, or uh, you know, hey. Uh, they'd be like, "Don't invite him to parties. He ruins parties." Meanwhile, I don't do anything but say no. I don't want to have drugs. That's it. And yeah, I, I've never ruin- had. Uh, I've never had that. I've never walked into a party once and said, "All of you should stop doing this." Yeah, you you don't do that. I don't. You- I don't care what people do. Just don't do it to me. I mean, unless it's sexy time. Even that, maybe I don't. There's certain things I don't like. What if there are things you're like, and well, then I'm like, you? then I say, do it to me. But I have to, be, I have to consent. Fair enough. There has to be consent. You can't just. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. This is way off topic. <laughs> and that's a brand. So uh, hookers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not like a hook in a song. Mm. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Business brain. What's the other part? <laughs> love your art. Oh yeah. So you know, love what you do and create what you want. But as I'm saying, don't allow the artist brain and the business brain to to, to interact. They, they are two separate worlds, but you need both of them. And going back to your question, why do artists not make it? Like, and some do and some don't. The reason no, is... Well, I said, why is it you think that some people uh, get stuck in that artist mentality and they don't, they're not able to... Oh, lack to, of knowledge. Lack and that's of what knowledge. I was saying. Lack of knowledge. They don't understand the business side. And the ones who start understanding the business side, even if it's subconscious, because there are successful people out who, there who don't know why. Yeah, they don't know. Just like you don't know why you actually like the Schechter. It's just subconscious. You just subconsciously like it. I think Dave Grohl is actually a really good example of people who make it but don't know why. Because even just listen oh, to yeah. that guy in, in interviews, he's <laughs> just he, right. He's just so he's so genuine. He seems like such a nice guy. He seems like he he's just nice so guy. like he 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 just seems like he has like a really big heart. But he has basically been successful since he was a kid and he was a drummer for hire all the time he was a studio drummer yeah but what i'm saying is he's been successful since he was a kid now yeah. he's grown into uh an empire that he's pretty much built for himself but like you listen to him in in interviews it's all focused on you know the artist perspective and he doesn't actually dissect any anything that he's done to well, see what else how does he... he know he literally knows write music make money that's how his career was because he he survived off Nirvana, he made money after Nirvana died, right? And then he was like, "I'm gonna do Foo Fighters," and they're like, "Oh, the drummer from Nirvana is gonna do a band? Let's listen. I'm already in because it's the drummer from Nirvana, right?" And he's just such a happy go lucky person. How can you not like Dave Grohl? You know what's crazy? I don't like any of his music, and I don't like Nirvana music, but I've listened to all of it, and I have all of it, but I don't like it. Like like if it comes. But I <laughs> like uh, never mind. I listened to for like six months straight. Every time I went to bed, I would just put it on repeat. But you don't like it, and I I didn't like it at all. And why? I was like, why do I like this stuff? And I just there was I think I was connecting to his depression mm. and the message, but I didn't like the music. Like I was like, the music's so boring. And but like the hurt, I think I because you know how like I'm really good at reading people, so I guess I was just feeling, you know, his his his, uh, his nerves. Like you could just feel his death. And uh, I think that's what I I grew up, I, I attached to. But Foo Fighters, I can't. 
You're like, it's way too happy. <laughs> no, there's nothing about it that I'm interested in. Yeah, it's way too happy. <laughs> I don't mind the happiness. It's just, to me, it's... I mean, Nirvana was, you know, doom and grunge form. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at all this depression. in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do, like, a doom cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit? I thought the I thought the Weird Al already did that. No, a Doom version. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're just uninformed. They they are not they are not given the knowledge of the business, and they only know what they know. And their success is based on, well, I see so-and-so made a film or so-and-so recorded an album and they make money. So if I do what they did, I will make money. But they don't realize that there's a path, there's a process. They don't see the behind get, the scenes that yeah. got them to that point. Like Something that you pointed out, which blew my mind when you first told me, and then like oh, I, yeah? you know, I realized was the truth when I actually started seeing it and doing my own research, <laughs> was that... I don't make this stuff up. Um, I make up half of it. <laughs> Was that it takes about five to ten years for anyone to have that first big break, quote yeah, unquote. Yeah, big break. Yeah. And it's like, oh wow, this person came out of nowhere. And you realize, oh wait, they've been around forever and you've probably seen them multiple times. And you're just like, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that they just had like these little things and they were doing a lot of work behind the scenes to build relationships and opportunities. I call it the gorilla in the center. You know that test? No. Nope. Is a psych is a psychological it's test. It's related to gorilla in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Oh, my uh, feelings. No, let's see. What is it? It's the, uh, let's I mean, the gorilla. I think they call it the gorilla and the bloom. Let me see. Gorilla. Gorilla? And the bloom. Why are, Why is it that like a lot of like psychological things have some yeah. sort of like relation to like an animal? Like there's an elephant in the room. There's a gorilla in the room. You're monkeying around. What is it? Gorilla. Gorilla in the room. Test. What is this? What is this? Is this? Uh, is this like a is this like an actual like like psychological oh, thing you're looking up or is it like they're, yeah they're officially they officially call it the invisible gorilla mm. and basically we don't see anything we're not interested in and we're only remember that the rule plus five uh, plus two minus two so if you have five points of information on something it, it, anything more than seven yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you don't really pay attention to it so they had people throwing like playing with a the basketball they had uh a, I think it's a. They have red people and blue. Be Let me see. Hmm. Anyway, was it like people got like dressed up in red and blue, or is it like there was like an animation? No, it was like people. It was people, and they were just playing. They were playing basketball. Okay. And. Uh, but red and blue. Red and blue, and they're throwing the the basketball around, okay. and then a, a gorilla, a guy in a gorilla suit, walks into the center of this, looks at the camera, and then waves to the camera, then he walks off, and then they go, "Did you see it?" And you go, "Huh?" And then they. They go, and then they point to it, and they show it, <laughs> and, it and then you watch the video again because you're like, they're messing with me. And lo and behold, you're looking for the gorilla, and the gorilla comes out. And it's the same theory that, you know when you buy a certain kind of car, and now you see that car everywhere? Yeah. The car was everywhere. You just didn't notice it until you noticed the first thing that made you you know, acknowledge. That it's your car. Yeah. And and that's the same thing with successful people. We don't know they're successful. They're They're nobodies. So why are we paying attention to Brad Pitt being a, a waiter? Why are we, you know, like I was telling you, I was watching uh, Spartacus Blood and Sand. The, the girl plays Maze on, uh, on, on Lucifer. Lucifer and, is... and the kid who's on, uh, who was in uh, uh, Jessica Jones, uh, he was like the uh, the heroin addict. He's also in Spartacus. Really? And he's a little kid. Wait, Lucy Lawless is in it too. Lucy, man, but she's Xena. She was already successful. I'm just saying, time, you know, it? Lucy Lawless. <laughs> I, I, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> My pause button has been broken. Uh, Lucy Lawless. Heart. She's, isn't she from like uh, New, uh, New Zealand? Zealand I think. Yeah. She's from New Zealand. She's a Kiwi. She's a Kiwi. Anyway, she plays a Roman in this show. Anyway, uh, my point is. Uh, She's Roman around the globe. <laughs> all right. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you don't see people of note until they're people of note. And that's why I always tell people, you know, if you're an actor, make friends with actors because you don't know you might you be performing know. with the next robert de niro yeah you don't know who someone is who or, they know or who they will be or who they will be it's the same thing with like oh man i wish we could open up for metallica you know metallica wasn't metallica until they were metallica yeah well they their first couple of the first like what five to ten years they were like doing they were touring all the time but they were always an opening act like they yeah, they, yeah. they went out with like uh they went out with venom. ozzy they went out with van halen they went out with the, like, even like when they first started they were going out with like venom yeah <laughs> venom no one, no one listens to that. 
I mean, Venom listens to Venom. Yeah, well, they have to, so somebody listens to it. <laughs> Venom. Is Venom? Is, uh, I don't know my uh, my history on this fact, but is Venom the first band to start doing like the uh, the growling vocals? Uh, I don't know, because isn't Metallica also growly vocals? No, I mean like the you know the death metal. <laughs> yeah, I'm like those growly vocals because like there's definitely. Hey, honestly, don't you say that's what I sound like? No, Children of Bodom. Well, isn't that death metal? Well, that's black metal. You say I have black metal vocals. Yes. What band is the first to do the first to, to do, do death metal vocals? Death. We're gonna find metal out right now. Growl vocals. Ooh. Yeah, because uh, Ozzy was the first to yell. What do you mean yell? Like the like the loud yelling vocals. No, actually, no, because it goes back. Because uh, you'd have a lot of like the the rock guys doing that too. So like, oh, uh, death. Death. Really. The band Death and its pre. Precursor Mantis was its two vocalists. Wait, when did Death come out? Eighties. I don't. Do I have to look this up? Yeah, because we were talking about it right now. Yeah, we right, need fine. to know. We need Why to do know. I got to look it up? I'm the talker. I mean, I'm talking to you right now. I don't know. It says uh, the style, the vocal style. Mm. But Death is the first. <sighs> yeah. Maybe that's why it's called Death Metal Vocals because Death originated right. it. I mean, that makes sense. That does make sense. Let's see. Cannibal Just... Corpse Metal Vocals. Doesn't say the year, uh, but you know, whenever Ooh. fucking when death came out. All right. So apparently, as at the moment, we'll have to double check this when we do the notes. 12th century. No, 1966. <laughs> the Who released the song Boris the Spider, which featured death of growl vocals. Really? Yeah. The Who? I. By bass, something today. The bass player did it. That makes sense. You know what? Uh, I'm going to give. Oh, wait, wait. Invent- wait. What are we, what are we waiting? 1956. Really? Put a spell on you by screaming Jay Hawkins. They did monstrous vocals. Ooh. Pink Floyd. Oh, wait. 1956. No. The Clash. But those aren't death metal vocals. Uh, we're going to have to listen to this after Motorhead. the Motorhead. Whatever. I don't care. They didn't do death metal vocals. Not even. Who? Ever. Motorhead? They did not do meth metal vocals. We did dance with death. <laughs> they did Lemmy vocals. <laughs> <laughs> you got to ace of spades. Ace of spades. <laughs> So sweet. I'm doing. doing you so got killed. the ace of spades. <laughs> and that's Gamma Ray doing uh, ace of spades. I love Gamma Ray. <laughs> Him to the dark. Dark. The dark. The dark. <laughs> Have you ever heard that song, Into the Dark? Uh, I think so. <laughs> that's also the original singer uh, from uh, Halloween. Really? I did yeah. not know that. He does, the, he does the best version of Victim of Fake Fate, <laughs> where he goes. You you don't want to die, do ya? You will. You are burning. Ah! And he does this like <laughs> ridiculously high inhuman vocal. And yeah. squeezed balls. Yeah. But then like I think it's Kai Hansen was the next one. Or Michael Kiss, one of the two. Michael Kiss, I think. And he came in and he does uh victim of fate. And he goes, You don't want to die, do you? <laughs> uh, but you will. You were burning. Ah! And he does like this really beautiful <laughs> note. And you're like, eh, it's not the same. <laughs> He's like, this is very broad, mate. Yeah. You need to be grittier. I liked it, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> you know. And he does because you were telling someone to go to hell, you need that to be gritty. Yeah, you gotta you be can't like, be like pretty about it. Hell! <laughs> <laughs> he also did, I think <laughs> I think Michael Kiss does uh, Future World Future World We all live in Future World We all live in a yellow submarine A yellow submarine <laughs> Our show gets banned You're not allowed to do Beatles man uh, No one's allowed to do Beatles Except for the Beatles and the guy from that movie Who no one knows about the Beatles All right. Oh yeah <laughs> one guy what the hell's the jady mcgibney everyone <laughs> good night everybody good night uh you need to you need to, all right to, to sum up the show we basically were asking why don't people like my artistic efforts and the re- you know and also you should love your artistic efforts for yourself the reason people don't like your music your your artistic efforts is because they, they have not attached to you emotionally they haven't connected to your brand they need to connect to you as a person yeah. and therefore you as a brand and then whatever you're artistic. And then what? Yeah. Is. Yeah. If you're relying on people to buy into the thing you make, your career will not go far. And it's people that learn. This is the thing. If you do your research, you'll notice people that don't want to do like the marketing or they don't want to do the interviews. And you're like, I just want to create, I just want to create like they don't have longevity. 
they might have that one song where everyone connects to the song because it might be about something. And now you got the one hit wonder. Mm -hmm. And then every time they, they released seven albums after that, <laughs> but no one bought it. And, but you know, when they play out, they have to play that song and no one cared. They, everyone's bored through the whole set. And then they play that one song. and Everyone's like, Woo! you know, and that's why when you go to like a Bon Jovi show now, they're going to play every hit they've ever had and maybe like two new songs. And during those two new songs that people are going to go pee <laughs> or they're going to get alcohol or right? both or both. They're going to pee while getting the alcohol and everyone's going to be like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, they're playing a new song. And they go, oh, keep going. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Same thing with Metallica. In fact, uh, uh, um, what's the name of the band? Oh, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin Ugh. played Stairway to Heaven during a tour. And it was before it came out on album and they were just playing it to like get used to it. And people were like bored. They were like, like what is lay this? down. They would leave. They would just, they just couldn't take it. And then it came out and it was a huge hit. And then everyone was like, this song's amazing. But meanwhile, before they knew the song, cause it's such a slow burn. And you know, like, if you don't know the song, like you're, you're not along for the ride. And I think that's not, that's not accurate at all. You're being an artist right now. All right, fine. You're, you're, oh, it's a long song. It's slow in the beginning, then it builds up. It has nothing to do with it. You think that has to do with it? No. How many times on Long Island did you hear Stairway to Heaven when you had the radio on? A lot. A lot. It's like every other song on uh, B -B -B. on WBAB <laughs> and WBLI and WRCN and the, this and that. All of them. You're I'm pretty sure it just comes preloaded into every pre uh, used car that you have. It's like, oh. Look, but I, for you to think that it's a, a slow burn, it, it proves to me that you still haven't learned anything fr from me about marketing and that you believe the song itself is important. I do not think that the song is important. Then why would you say it's a long burn? I mean, it is a slow burn. If you it's don't not at all. It's the perfect amount of time for the person who likes that song. You are 100% correct. <laughs> I don't need to kind of like the song. I just need to hear the song enough. In fact, most songs that people hate to start end up going all right i'll listen to it and the reason is because when they're driving their car it comes on the radio it comes on the radio and sometimes you're like oh i hate i hate this song you never heard it you just i i don't know or i don't know what this is and you change the channel and then one day you're in the car with somebody that you go oh i like this song and they're and listening they it and you're like this song is crap how do you know this song's crap you never listen to it uh it's just it's from a stupid band and then the next time they're not in the car but you're driving and then the song comes on you're like uh Right, Whatever. I'll, I'll listen to it for the first the first uh, you know what so I, when I don't like it for song. the first time people were like this is uh crap it, yeah because they did, did not know the song they weren't familiar with it they hadn't built up an emotional connection to the song well it would well in that case it's not an emotional connection in that case it's repetitive uh, uh imprinting um if you <clears throat> if you took one of your songs right and you spent three hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of dollars all right if you could get somebody to listen to a third of that song every day, they will listen to the whole song at some point, and then they will like the song. That's just that's just how it is. Repetitive imprinting is. Haven't you ever gone to the movies? And what do they show you in the beginning? Have have popcorn. Have some soda. And then you just kind of and you're like, oh, you yeah, know yeah. the 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 theater brand concession thing. Yeah, but you're in the theater. You're like, I'm not going to get soda or popcorn. Then you go in the theater and they're like, get the popcorn and soda. And you're like, maybe I will. And then you get up and you go. Right? Because they're imprinting on you. It's, mm. it's, it's repetitive imprinting. Those bastards. <laughs> you're already in the theater. Why did I need to show you it on the screen? Repetitive imprinting. It's repetitive <laughs> imprinting. You know, and... Uh, and that's the thing. That's the thing with music when they do that. The same thing with why do you think they show trailers all the time? The closer you get to the movie coming out, the more that trailer shows. In fact, the trailer that they show is usually thirty seconds or fifteen seconds. The closer you get to that movie, the shorter the thing. The are. shorter the marketing of that commercial is. They're going to release a good trailer like a month or two before it comes out. But the closer you get. Hit of the summer. Duh, 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 duh. <clears throat> Rolling Stone says this, you know, because Rolling Stones watched the movie a month before it came out. Yep. You know, and uh, <clears throat> whatever. And now you, you just keep in doom. You know, Black Widow, Black Widow, Black Widow, Black Widow, Black Widow, Black Widow. And you're like, what's coming out in the theater? Oh, Black Widow's playing. It's it's repetitive imprinting. It's not an emotional. Even Black connection. Widow apparently keeps getting pushed back further <clears throat> and further. Oh, because of COVID. What do you think is the emotional connection to that movie? Uh, the almost decade-long 
brand connection with no. Scarlett Johansson and oh, Iron all right, Man. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, the decade long, but it goes further than that. Anyone who likes Scarlett Johansson is going to follow it, and anyone who liked Black Widow from the comic books is going to follow it, and anyone who liked Iron Man as a B character in the comics is going to like Iron Man because they're connected to that long brand. Mm. But then the people who like Robert Downey Jr. are going to like it. So there's a lot of stuff being connected here. A, a lot, lot of brand of value. When Iron Man came out, like when they were filming it, people were pissed. They're like, why would they get Robert Downey Jr.? And then they would see the behind the scenes stuff and people were making fun of it. Oh, it looks stupid. Look at the armor. It looks terrible. Right. And then they showed the trailer and <clears throat> everyone was talking about how Iron Man wasn't going to fly in this movie. Right. That was the big thing. They're not going to make him fly. Everyone was talking about that. It was a rumor. He's not going to fly. So at Comic-Con, they had to show the scene where Iron Man flies. And then that was the big talk. Oh, he flies. He flies. He flies. It's so stupid because people were like connected to the the, the iconic aspect of a B character. Uh, but over the years, um, what is it they're connecting to with an with a Robert Downey Jr. or Joe Hansen? What are they? Is it because of their movies? No, it's because of whatever it is that they stand for and that brand and whatever connection they have with. Yeah. When they do their brand. interviews, oh, I love what they're saying in the interview. Oh, I love I love the the missions they're doing. I love. You know, Robert Downey Jr., when he gets interviewed, he's very playful and he has like this kind of like, you know, this uh, this little like something, something to him, the sass. And, and people are like, oh, I love listening to him talk. He's and, very animated. He's very just fun. He's fun, right? And then you see he's in a movie. Like, of course, I'm going to see the movie. And what you think of who he is is going to kind of radiate through that, right? It's the same thing with, uh, you know, Matthew McConaughey or anybody, any any celebrity that you're a fan of. Uh, depending on how they run their business and have longevity, and I'm not talking like C, D, and B, like stars. I'm talking about like A celebrities, celebrities that run the system. You know, the reason they're up there is because they're running their businesses. They're not just a band. They're not just an actor. They're not. They have these massive corporations that they created. They have these uh, teams, these uh, industries, and they just grow that. And then you have people like like fun fact. Like I think it's something that people don't realize is that like. Uh, one of the first things that you pointed out to me is the fact that those big A-list celebrities, they have companies. It's like when they get hired to do a movie, it's not, oh, we're hiring this person on payroll. It's like, oh, we're hiring Robert Downey Jr.'s company. Yeah, absolutely. But then you have the, uh, you know, the people that are super celebrities, but they have no money, they have no career, and they're just doing... They MC do, Hammer. MC, well, MC Hammer's a D. He's a D. He's a D. Uh, he was up there for... He was an point. A at one point. I know, so I said MC Hammer. Uh, but I'm literally talking about those celebrities... Like uh, Tom, um, let me uh, let me actually find someone in my head that uh, definitely not Tom Cruise, not Tom Cruise. But well, there was a uh, Tom Sizemore. He was like in everything in the eighties and nineties, but he was never an A celebrity. But everyone knew who he was. But he was a bad boy. He was always getting in trouble. He got arrested for drugs. He does drugs. He had that uh, sex video released. No one cared. It was him and like three other women or whatever it was. You know, um, sounds like he was having a good time. You know, but he, he's not running his business. He's just he's just an actor, and he's he, he doesn't focus. Whatever. Speaking of eighties yeah. actors, whatever happened to Steve Gutenberg? Steve Gutenberg actually didn't he retire? And he he like got something? typecast, and he couldn't take uh, it anymore, yeah. so he vanished. And I was actually looking this up the other day. I don't know why, but because <laughs> everyone loves Steve Gutenberg. Yeah, Steve Gutenberg. Yeah, so, he definitely got typecast. Yeah, he was he was kind of tired with the uh, he wanted he's he does stuff, but he doesn't. Is he doing stuff more like behind the scenes at this point, or is is he still in entertainment, or is he like he's you know, still I'm, an I'm an EMT now? Yeah, no, he's uh, let's see, he's done 104 projects. Oh wow, he just did original Gangster in 2020, he did Break Even in 2020, he did. He's got an Into the Dark, uh, the Goldbergs. He was on an episode, five episodes. Really. But he's not, you know, he's not who he is anymore. And the reason was is because he kind of was like, I got to step out of the light because his brand was he didn't want to do what he was doing. You know, he just kept being like a ridiculous character that he didn't want to do. Let's see. Uh, well, he also didn't uh, diversify right away, because like one of the things that you you had you brought up several times with uh, Brad Pitt specifically was the fact that he was starting to get typecast. And then he specifically was like, I'm going to branch out so that I'm not typecast. Well, uh, it wasn't that he was starting a typecast. It's just everything he was sent would have typecast. Gotcha. 
because he did a uh, Thelma and Louise, and they just kept sending him that kind of role. And he was like, eh. and then there was like this weird role in uh, Roman. Uh, uh, Reverend Stewart? Is that, no, it's not. No, no, no. Uh, Christian Slater's in it. Uh, uh, True Romance. Oh, yeah. Where he plays like a drug addict, and he was like, yeah, I'll do that. And so he did a bit rule there, and then like so he purposely chose to do. Now he now he sort of as like in his rent, like he does a very specific character. Yeah, but um, it's like something that he's like, okay, this is what I like doing. You yeah, know, this is what I feel comfortable doing. Yeah, he he chose that kind of path, and uh, you have to do that. You have to be very conscious of what you do because I, what you do is the truth in your brand's message. One of the things I think is yeah. fantastic is when you have. Tell someone me. who is able to diversify yeah. so well who? and that becomes the brand like someone like rob williams i think is phenomenal because he was able to jump who? between roles or someone like gary oldman who was able to do literally <laughs> anything gary oldman can never heard him <laughs> you can just we need you to play this you know rock can you play but the why rock? is gary oldman not as big as robin williams was uh both fabulous actors. I would say Gary Oldman's probably even a better actor. But why? I'm assuming is he did not put enough time into the business aspect of it, and he focused more on the craft. That's right. Uh, Gary Oldman is an actor's actor. He believes he's like I just want to do my work. I want to do the job. You know, he's he's come out and says he doesn't really like the interview stuff. He doesn't like he doesn't like any of that. Basically, the business end of it. And uh, does he have money? Yeah. Does he invest? Yeah. But uh, we're talking about longevity in the sense of like. He he's hit his pinnacle where pin, pinnacle, pinnacle where he is who he is. That's it. Rob Williams was always evolving and always growing his brand and always doing. I mean, he went from being the funniest guy on stage to basically one hour photo. You know, like he went to these amazing dramatic roles and you know, but on top of it, he was doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. He was he 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 helped with the feeding the homeless for like what it was it 10 years you know comic relief didn't he didn't he also do something with like kids too one of the charities or i'm making that up i i, I don't i don't he probably did I mean, the stuff he did but anyway my, my point is he he was always on talk shows he was always doing press he was always he even did whose line is it anyway at one point oh yeah but as a guest but a guest. yeah but you know gary Oman, how often do you see the only time you see him talking to anyone is when he has to because of his movie and even then he's like eh. Like how many times have you seen Robin Williams on a talk show versus all the time? Yeah, because he was like, yeah, he came on shows just because sometimes. I was like, hey, let's hang out. Yeah, you you have to be aware that you have to be proactive in your career. You can't just be like, well, let my my work do the talking. Yeah, you want you yeah. want to see how amazing I am? Listen to my music, read my books, check out my movies, look at the TV. Like, no, no, because that just makes you sound. Uh... Self-centered. No, you're only as good as your last thing you did. So if you're only being known for what you produce, no one knows who you are. But as what a I'm saying is, if you're saying, "Hey, look at my stuff. Look at my stuff," that makes you come off as self-centered. Well, the way I'm doing it, yeah. But some people they think that they go, oh, "I don't have. It. I'll let my 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 stuff talk for me." And it's you know, it's not that you think they're self-centered, and that if they're just like, "Well, I don't want to really do interviews," you know, just just watch my stuff. Just look at what I do, and that's enough. And, you know, that's never going to get you longevity. But we're not really, we're talking about business now. I, I mean, I want, art-wise, you know, if you rely on that aspect, if you go, if I make this song, uh, or, you, you know, like, like you've recorded your guitars far too many times in my mind. Like if I was, if I was the producer and or running the studio, I would either, either canceled the session and said, why don't you figure out what you want? Because it's costing, too, like, because as the producer, I'd be paying for it. Yeah, I'd be like, you just wasted my time and money. You told me you were ready to record, and then you know you're like, well, you know, I just want to try to find my sound. I was like, well, wait, wait, why don't you find your sound, <laughs> and then get back to me, and then we'll talk, right? Uh, your 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 artist brain is trying to figure out what it is you do. Your artist brain is trying to learn what you do, basically, and you know, um, well, I already said that I'm in the learning stage right now for this. Yeah, but what I'm saying is. Then why are you trying to record? Well, I'm learning how to record. Yeah, but you're learning how to record with your songs that you're trying to make an album for. And that doesn't make any sense when you're learning. You should be learning to find your sound that has nothing to do with a product that you're eventually going to, quote unquote, give to the public, right? And it's like it's like with editing. You're like, well, I won't. I'm going to practice editing once I start doing stuff. So once I start making my videos for my songs, then I'll practice editing. So now you're going to spend time learning how to edit when you have a product you need to get done. 
instead of just learning how to edit, just doing things to just practice editing. It could be anything. And it's the same thing with learning. Like, like I said, when I was in the recording studios, they used to tell me, go, you could come in here anytime you want and mess with the equipment. Just, but, but if you ever go into a studio and you're messing with the equipment to try to figure out your sound, it's an insult. You know, you're spending $75 an hour. They want to get paid, but at the same time, you're wasting their time. And you have to look at yourself the same way. You're wasting your time if you're trying to learn the equipment while trying to make a product. Well, that's why I'm not trying to make the product. I'm learning. So you you haven't been recording guitars for an album? I have, but it's as a test. It's not for the final thing. Oh, you're not going to, you're actually not going to, those songs on that wall, you're not going to. Those songs are going to get done, but. Is that going to be on an album? The the songs yeah are you are you is that the uh is that are you the, suggesting that i write something just by messing around and playing and i, I don't understand what you're you're getting at you're trying to learn how to record and then you're spending the time recording songs you're going to have on an album so you should actually learn how the process works to find your sound so because you're trying to find a sound that works within your song i'm trying to find a sound that i like a song that you like no a sound sorry i, I <laughs> I got weird accent out of nowhere. I meant to say sound, but I'm also learning how, yeah, uh, like the science of why things work the way they do within recording. So I'm just learning. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't have songs, you wouldn't be doing this. No, if I had, if I had other songs, I would use that. Or if you, if you're saying that it would be better for me to just sit there and just go here, let me just plug in and play something randomly. You'd be surprised how powerful that is. Okay. You know why? Why? Because you don't know how to work the... I, you don't understand what you're looking for. When you have a song and a style, right? It's like the first... It was one of the times you're like, hey, what do you think? And I was like, I don't know what you're looking for, so I can't, I can't give you a thumbs up. And you're like, oh, but does it sound good? I go, it doesn't sound good to me, but I don't know what you're looking for. And then I, I to explain to you the idea of traffic flow. And you're like, oh. And then you went back and you're like, it sounds 100 times better, Right? But you have to know what you're looking for. And if you're trying to get that sound with the music you wrote, then you don't necessarily understand what it is you're doing. You're just finding the sound that works for that song or songs. But you're still not in control of the skill. And the only way you can get in control of the skill is by learning through the skill. The skill, like why, like an EQ. So, like when I looked at your EQ, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, I didn't know this is what you were doing. This well, it wasn't the EQ. It was the I didn't have I didn't record them properly, so I didn't have a. Uh, no, it was both things. It was that you weren't recording full quality in, and then your EQ, you were just raising a, a frequency. And I was like, no, you got to make it like a loop, like it has to rise to that frequency. Oh yeah. Um, or then you would just drop a frequency in the middle of three other frequencies, and I was like, you don't do it that way. But the thing is, you're just finding a sound you like but you're not understanding the tool. And the only way you can understand that tool is if you're not working on a song. Because A, the song has what in it? There's multiple tracks. So now you have to learn multiple different tools and well, skills. What's awesome is that you could just solo one thing out and just listen to the one thing. But I see what you're saying. <laughs> There's way too much stuff going on. I'm trying to do all of it at once rather than just learning bit by bit and step by step. Well, yes and no. But uh, uh, you know, you, you're saying that you can mute something is... I feel you didn't hear me. You're not, you're not listening. You know, you're trying, you're trying to learn what your style of music, how to use the tools for your style of music, but you don't understand the tools. So by learning what sounds good with your style of music, isn't necessarily you understanding that tool. And that means if you write a different style song or you go into a different part, now you have to relearn that tool. And you're saying you're not trying to record any of your music you're just using it right now to learn how to do it. The end result is to be able to record my music, yeah. but at the t at the moment, I have to learn how to do that before I can go and record my stuff. But there's a couple things but you're I've doing. But I've recorded everything. Yeah. And because, then deleted it. Well, I have everything saved, but then you pointed mm -hmm. out that there's other things that I could do, and now I'm trying something else, which yeah. was pointed out to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm just learning the process. Now, what's the one thing you, you are not doing that you should be doing uh, uh, that also makes what you're learning uh, backwards. Uh, I have no idea. I'm... Well, you have yet to record the drums and bass and then find a sound for those two instruments and then bring the guitars in. You're going backwards. You're starting with the guitars to get a sound you like with the guitars, which has nothing to do. And also for you to kind of EQ it, 
before you have the other instruments in there, it means that you don't know what you're doing. And you're not learning what you're doing because you're not, you're just trying to, well, this sounds good. So well, you, I'm practicing how to use an EQ using yeah. what I, the instrument that I know how to play. Yeah. But when it comes down to actually recording everything, then I can move on to the next step. Once I understand the how to use an EQ using what I already know, which is guitar, yeah. then I can do it for real and know what I'm doing with the EQ for those other things because I'll know what, in theory, to be looking for. So are you are you taking uh, uh, skill set exercises with the EQ or are you just recording your stuff and then uh, taking sections of the song and re-EQing each section? I'm taking the songs that I've done. I've recorded them. Yeah, several times. Several times because I'm trying different things yeah. and I'm learning. And being that I do different things in different songs, there's different variables that I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. And I am EQing the guitars to learn how to use an EQ within all those songs. All right, but uh, so you're not you're not actually like uh, doing exercises. You're just going. Does this sound good? Do you know how to do like EQ exercises and stuff? Well, if you have something specific, I would love to hear it. I've given you uh, several times, uh, but you know, like uh, any. Oh, we have three lines. Ooh, uh, hello, people. When you when you basically you're going backwards. You painted the house. Okay, but you're I, you're. I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. So I yeah. don't know how an EQ works. So why am I going to go and play with an instrument or two instruments that I do not feel we're, comfortable playing with? We're not. I originally wasn't talking about those instruments, but I'm just saying you learning the EQ without starting there, uh, without starting how to understand how the EQ works, you're going backwards anyway. But it, but what you're doing to get a sound you like is you're you're painting the house incorrectly. So by the time you get to the bass and the drums you don't know how the EQ works still. You just know what sounds good with the guitar, but you don't know what you're doing. You're not creating exercises to utilize the EQ. And watching a video where it says, put this down and put this down. is not the same. It's not the same as finding exercises. For example, what if you took the guitar and you started with a basic rhythm that wasn't in one of your songs and your purpose was to find an EQ or how to isolate an EQ for a strumming pattern? And it's not necessarily the strum, but it's the open strum because that creates a certain EQ. And you're like, how do I, what is the exercise I'm going to use to eliminate a certain sound, right? And then it goes, well, what about chunky, chunky, chunky? That's what I'm saying. Did you take your songs and go from section to section to utilize the sections as an EQ exercise and go, how do I EQ this particular rhythm? On me, only one guitar though. Don't, don't use a double of a guitar. Don't use on one track, one, one track. track. But you have to subsection it. Not that you would do that when you record, and you you would do it as a, let me just practice. Yeah, because you have to learn, but you have to have exercise goals. You can't just go when well, when does it sound good. You have to say, all right, uh, I want to be able to use the EQ to do this specific thing, and I I need to have this specific sound. So now I'm learning it. It's like on guitar, like when you wanted to learn how to like sweep. Did you start with the sweep? No. What did you start with? Uh, started out with this is the pattern, and you pick one note at a time. All right, but you have to break up the pa the uh, the habit of yeah. the picking habit of down up down up down up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, you're trying to sweep, and you haven't learned how to uh, pluck yet. Mm. And that's what I'm saying. So by you recording the guitars multiple times over and over and over again to practice EQ you're basically trying to sweep before you learn how to before you learn the patterns does that make sense yes and that was something that i was taught to and because what would happen i get all that free time for the studio and i'd go in and i'd be like, and they're like what are you doing and i go i'm trying to learn the sounds like don't try to learn sounds don't try to learn what you like you have to learn how to utilize the tools so you can get the sound that's in your head. And I go, well, how do I know I'm getting the sound in my head if I don't? And they go, because if you know how to use the tools, you know how to get the sound that's in your head. It's the same thing with you on guitar. Learning music theory before writing a song. Because well, you're like, oh, I know the tools. I can make the sound in my head come out. That's right. Because before you learn how notes work, 
just the idea of like da 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 you know that I'm going up and down, up and down. All I gotta do is find that root note. Da 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 and now you could find it because you have the tools, you know the scales, you know the chords, you know that blah blah. So basically you're selling that I'm being an artist and not thinking of it uh wisely. Yeah. i I honestly feel you're wasting your time. Uh, and I think uh, as smart as you are, you could be utilizing your time to enhance the ability so you have control over your time. And remember, I talk about time management all the time. You're not yes. managing your time wisely. You're doing things. Uh, I call it the JD method where you're like, mm. I just I just try things until it sounds, you know, it's the thing I like. And I, and I used to do that all the time. That's why I sit there and I laugh and I smile because I'm like, I remember. But I, I had the the. Uh, I had the privilege of being around people that were experts and were able that said, stop doing that. And I, and I, at that point in my life was listening to people and I says, well, what should I do? And they said, do this. And the reason you want to be able to do that is so you could do what you want to do. You can't do what you want to do until you know how to use it. Which makes sense. Which totally makes sense. And so I have to come up with better exercises to learn how to do the thing is what you're telling me to do. Yeah, but more so you have to understand what an EQ does so you can create exercises based on figuring out how to do that thing. Like when you watch those videos, they're they're already experts. So they're they're just saying that you have to do this because Yeah. But it doesn't give me the 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 tool. I don't understand uh how it works until I actually do it. Yeah. Is what you're telling me. I feel when you watch those videos, if I was teaching a guitar, this would be what they're doing. This is how you play the Beatles song. It's going to be G, D, C. But they're not explaining how. They're not. No, they're not explaining why. Why do those chords work together? Why, you know, wh why are they playing in that order? What is the purpose of that? What makes that song? How does that song work musically? They're not telling you that. They're just saying, trust me, just play this. And, you, and then I'm teaching you the rhythm. And then you're like, uh, but, you know, I, what is the rhythm? Like, what am I, you know, what is that? I don't understand. They're just showing you the thing. That's what they say. And they say, do this and you'll get that sound. If you do this, I mean, not you'll all get of that them, sound. But well, a majority of them, I would say. I mean, most of them explain that, you know, what the point of an EQ is that you're making every, all the instruments fit together with, within their own space, within the recording. Not this way you don't have frequencies overlapping. That's, but they don't show you the, the, uh, the, um, the exercise to get to that. They don't show me the exercise to get yeah. to that, but they explain the purpose of an EQ. Yeah. So you have to find, figure out exercises to get to that. And you're, and also if you listen to a, 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 like a tutorial and it's not using your songs and it's now you're on the variable, what instrument are they using? The proficiency of the person playing it, uh, the amplifier. So I, I, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. So I need to come up with actual exercises and not just uh, recording things that I want to record. Yeah. I mean, you've literally recorded your guitars multiple times, all of it, multiple times. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to delete it and I'm going to do it, start over. And I, I think what you should be learning is how to have control over the things you want. So you can, you know how you were saying earlier, my perfection is I want to get what's in my head and put it out. You're saying I should have come up with better exercises so that I can get what's in my head to come out. Yeah, because and right now you're practice. searching for what's in your head, but you don't know how to use. I don't know how to just magically make it happen without having to search. Exactly. You're mm. driving a car without learning how to drive, and you're just like, well, I'll figure it out as I go. And you're crashing and hitting things, and you're like, oh, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just. Then you have to get a new car, and then you get the new car, and someone's like, oh, you know, uh, you should just use one foot. No, no, I, got, I, I, I'll get there. You know, and instead of saying, all right, use one. Why should I use one? Why should I use one foot? Now, well, using one foot allows your brain to focus more because you can lift and move it around and you're not. It's taking away one variable. So you're saying me trying the uh, the different mic placements and seeing what people are actually talking about and why I should do mic placements doing short. Not I wasn't recording my entire yeah. catalog. I was just doing here's a sample. You're saying that me doing that was a waste of my time. Because you don't know what you're looking for, uh, you this the you you. Well, I wasn't I wasn't trying to like I wasn't trying to find my sound. I was trying to see what like people were explaining uh -huh. things in the videos. <clears throat> yes. So I was like, what are they What are they talking about? Let me hear 
what they're talking about for myself by doing it. Mm -hmm. And then you said, I found the spot where I like the sound the best. Yeah, because afterwards I'm like, oh, I like this. Yeah, which means you were you didn't know that was the sound you liked because you didn't know well, you knew until you tried it, right? Well, that's right? the sound that I hear live. Yeah. So like that's the one. Okay, this is what I like. This is that's that's fine. But you had to move it around until you found it, and you go, there it is. Now, do you know why it works in that spot? Why it works that far away? Why that microphone? Now, if you use a different microphone, it's going to sound different. It's going to sound completely different. But if you know the tools and the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing, now you're not going to go, let me see what speaker works. You're going to just go, well, I, kn I know what I'm looking for. And I know what I know the. Yeah, but I've never done my, my argument in the, for yeah. the mic thing is that I've never done that myself before. So I'm doing it to learn and see what everyone's talking about because people are in the videos. Yeah. They're like, oh, you have to do this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like it's different when you're watching a, a tutorial as yeah. opposed to doing it yourself. So the short test that I did yeah. was to see what they were talking about and try that exercise that they were saying to try out. They so, were oh, telling you to put the microphone in specific spots. They were explaining that with the the cabinet, uh, yeah. with, you know, 4x12, each speaker has its own quality. Correct. And like, you know, I've never tested that myself on my own speaker, on my own cabinet. So yeah. I'm like, oh, let me see if that's true. And lo and behold, it is true. And then they were saying that the far, the farther away from the center, you know, further into the cone, you, uh, you know, you get more bass. And if you're closer to the cone, you get more, more highs. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, is that true? So I tried that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Then they're also yeah, yeah. explaining the, when you have, if you're having the mic, you know, straight on. Yeah. You know, it's a different sound than if you were to like, tilt it off axis so i tried it myself to be like oh this is this is true so to me i was learning the skill and i was understanding uh, i was trying to understand why that is true and seeing it for myself with the small quick exercise I wasn't recording my entire right. catalog can i give you a specific sound and you can get it to me without searching not yet no oh all right i was just wondering because I have not studied But did you yet. go through all the things? You said you figured it out. There's different sounds well, going like this. That with the short tutorial that I did, I yeah. didn't say that I was a master. I was saying that this is what they were explaining. I wanted to try the exercises that yeah. they tried for myself. Yeah. But again, I didn't go through my entire catalog. I was like, oh, let me try this. So you, you basically, what they showed you, you just emulated what they showed you. Yes, to see. To hear. Yeah. Well, hear. So to hear. So they were like, do it like this, and this is what you'll hear. And you're like, oh, that's what I hear. But are you learning why or understanding that is the sound for this particular thing? Also, you're using a, not the same microphone. I, I understand it's a completely it's different a completely microphone. Different. <laughs> right? But what what are you really learning when you're doing the different angles and the different sounds? What is it you're really learning? I am still learning. Yeah, but I'm just like, what is it you got out of that? Mic placement is important. <laughs> <laughs> it's It might not be important. It well, depends what you're going if for. If you don't place a mic, you're not getting a recording. Mic, mic placement <laughs> isn't the important part in that situation. It's the same reason you pick up a certain kind of guitar. Do you think the guitar is important? Well, if you want to play guitar, you need a guitar. Yeah, but do you think the guitar you use is important? No. But what, then why is mic placement important? Because if you don't have a mic, you can't record. <laughs> All right, so I could use any mic and I could put it anywhere. Uh, whether it's going to be something you like, that's a completely different thing. Also, don't use a condenser mic and an amplifier. Yeah, please. Or Thomas will murder you. I will, yeah, I will destroy <laughs> you. Uh, what so else? we've established that uh, I've let my artist brain get over with this entire thing. So I need to get back to letting my business brain go, hey, make better use of your time. That's what we've established in this episode. And also, uh, don't let other people, you know, dictate the value of your art. Yeah, don't let people dictate the value of it. But to close this episode, I just want to make sure you, you understand what I'm saying. I'm not the reason I feel you're wasting your time is because you think I'm not doing you, the the proper exercise to actually learn. I'm just doing stuff. Well, you still weren't able to explain to me what you were doing. Well, because I wasn't done with trying to figure out what I was doing. So then what are you learning? I when, don't know because I'm trying to figure out exactly. what to learn. <laughs> so when you go into math think, class, do you go in there? Well, let's just see what happens. I think I think you're trying to I think you're trying to establish that I already know a little bit, and I'm trying to tell you I know nada. No, so no, I'm no. trying to figure out what to learn and how to learn it. What I'm saying is, have you ever gone into a math class expecting to learn uh, uh, history? No. No, you went into math class to learn what? Math. And specifically, when you go to college, 
when you go into a math class to learn calculus, what are you going there to learn? Calculus. You have direction. You know what you're trying to learn. You're trying when you go. So the I, I think you're you're not understanding that the only direction I have is I want to learn how to record. I don't know anything else of where to go. So I'm exploring to figure out where I should start. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And I think a lot of when you give me uh, pointers, I'm not understanding. There, there's a lack of communication with uh, how you're teaching and how I'm learning. Yeah. Well, have you ever have you ever gone? You said you went to Five Towns. Is that correct? Yeah, that, we don't ever need to <laughs> mention that that was a thing because that was a a not good experience in my. Well, did they teach you how to record a song, or did they? I learned this is this is what I learned at Five Towns College. Probably nothing. I'll be honest. I learned how to wrap a cable. That's the only thing I took away. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Don't so, they do it around the sh the elbow? Because that's wrong. You're supposed no. to do it. You're supposed to do it like free free. Form. Yeah, I, I it was free form. Yeah, I that's the only thing I took away from my time at five. Oh, and I uh, I made a really awesome friend, my my friend Chris, who is oh, I awesome. Love Chris, excellent handshakes. He does have excellent. Oh, handshakes. Chris is a dude. Chris is a dude. Chris is a girl's name as well. It is. I, but I his don't name wanna... is Christopher, not Christine or Christina. I don't want to assume in this day and age. He could be he could be gender fluid. You don't know. I mean, he is kind How of dare you mostly uh, water. You presumed being that he's a human. He's being. mostly water. <laughs> he's fifteen ounces water, two ounces sugar. Chris Marinaccio. Oh, oh! Throwing out names, I can yeah. throw out names too. Ready? So if you, my if, father. If you need a sound guy or need somebody to to mix any of your stuff, I yeah, highly JD recommend JD McGivney. Yeah, no, not JD. You can find him on BBR Productions. Also, account. I'm glad that he's not here in the room right now because I why? went to school with him, and he'd be like, oh, "JD, why are you talking? <laughs> don't, don't talk about five times. No, five no, no. Times. It's all the the audio five stuff. He'd be like, oh, no, "No." If you were gonna draw, right? Let's say you went to drawing school. Oh man, I, I am amazing at stick figures. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I deal with. This is why I don't give him advice when, when we're not on the show. Because I'm like, hey, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know what? I like penises. And I'm like, what? He's like, they're fish. <laughs> I mean, they do swim, technically, <laughs> kind of, maybe. Anyway, if you were going to go to drawing school, right? Hypothetically. And you wanted to be able to draw, like, uh, people. Do you think they'll start you off with, like, people? No. What would they start you off with? Basics. And Which I understand that the, the, there are the basics. But again... You're getting away from the fact that I know nothing and I'm trying to find the beginning point. And then when you tell me stuff, some yeah. of the stuff that you teach me or you tell to me, uh, it doesn't click. You see nothing. <laughs> you know what that's from? I see. No. It's the it's the penguins from men again. You see nothing. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and they go. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your hands are moving around. I thought you were trying to vanish. You see nothing. <laughs> You'll see nothing. Well, I'm just saying the reason I was saying earlier that I feel you're wasting your time is you're starting with the end and not really working from the beginning. So you're saying I should start with the drums? No, no, let's ignore like the uh, instrument wise. Okay, so again, this is an example being that we've gone around in this conversation a couple of times is that there, I, I'm not understanding your lesson here. My, my lesson is uh, you're starting at where should the microphone go on the speaker? But you don't know why you're doing that. Okay, so, so you, I need to understand why. Yeah, but you should start further down. You should start with like, what's the process of getting a sound? Breaking that. You know, like if I say to you, hey, what's your long-term goal? And you go, I want to be a professional clown, right? And <laughs> I go, all right, great. Now what are you going to do? And you go, I'm going to learn how to be a clown. And I go, well, that well, that's different than being a professional clown. And you're like, but I have to learn how to be a clown before I could be a professional clown. You go, but you don't know what the clowning world's about. You're going to invest in that time without understanding the industry, blah, blah, blah. Right? So what do I say? I want to be a professional clown. Then I break it down into smaller smart goals. And and so I need to break it down to the smaller smart goals. Yeah. I mean, but I, need, I also need to do my research in general to be like, oh, how does, how does this world work? So I need to, I need to rethink how I'm I'm learning is what you're telling me. Yeah, you're starting where you're you're ready to play solos before learning how to play the guitar. So I need to just do more learning before I start doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, like you shouldn't even be re playing any instruments yet. You know what I'm saying? Like you're trying to find a sound, but you don't know what you're looking for. Oh, I'm not I'm not trying to find a sound. I'm trying to figure out how the recording works. And how do you do that by if you're working if you're trying to record your music? All right, so then I will stop recording my music. I'm not telling you could. In fact, if I were you, I would just record it and however it sounds, it sounds, and that would be it. You know, like the hell with it. 
because you should be getting to the next thing. You're focusing too much on like, this needs to be perfect. Well, I need to learn how to record before I can record. I mean, you've already recorded it several times. And some of the stuff you recorded on your phone was great. I mean, that's weird that my iPhone definitely sounds better. Than I, I'm what just I've done. saying. And you have a couple of those songs on this album because you're re-recording it. And that blows my mind. Well, I, I get it because you rewrote it and you kind of like cre recreate it. I get that part. But the fact that it's being re-recorded blows my mind because that's the artist brain. You should be like done with that next song. Right. But you're putting so much time into the art brain. That's like, you know, well, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I do. But as far as learning the skill of recording, I think you should think, start at the technical I think when end. When it comes down to the art, I need to also uh, create the art that I want. Like you said, if I'm yeah. creating art, I should create art that I want to create. To be fair, I did not. I did not want to do. The only recording that I've done uh, that I wanted to do yeah. was the original recording for On the Wings of Dragons because yeah. I did that for me. Because I think that was I did that when Psychosis ended, and I was like, I need to just do something for me, just to make my you know soul yeah. feel good. It literally <laughs> had nothing to do with anything. I just I wanted to. Yeah, do you keep it that myself. to you, so you don't actually show anyone that you didn't push the video. I get it; it was for I, you. I did. I did push the the, the video, video. It. Yeah. but I'm saying I did that because I wanted to do the song. Why'd you do? The and video? then I didn't do any any of the other stuff. I got the I did I got the video for free. Uh, it was a edit thing. So what? But you push anyway, it? I didn't want to put out the last EP. It was suggested highly that I put the the EP out. Absolutely. So. Why not? Why not put it out? Because I got I there was the music that was on the recordings. Yeah. Most of them I did not want to do the recordings. I did not feel I made music. I made art that I didn't want to make. So why did you write the song? I wrote the songs, but I didn't. The recordings that I did, most of them were stuff that I didn't want to do. So. Are you going to do those songs on another album? Uh, I'm going to do them as I wrote them. So you didn't write, you recorded them, not how you wrote them. It was stuff that uh, was not how I had originally done it, no. So what do you mean? I did not feel artistically yeah. that those things that I wanted to do. I made. I did art that I did not want to do. So you just wrote songs? That's not the writing part. and saying the recordings. The recordings didn't need to get done. What are you talking about? I think that uh, we're confusing. done with this episode. No, you're confusing the hell out of me. <laughs> well, I'm are sorry you confused? Is the song uh, the same song that's going on another album? Those songs, yeah, are going on to a new album in a different uh, presentation. What do you mean presentation? Like you rewrote them completely? That most of them, yes. Mostly, I meant. Sorry, yes. So you're saying four years ago. Well, you, the EP came out. You wrote songs less than four years ago. that you didn't want to write. I wrote songs that I wanted to write, and but you recorded, recorded them against my uh, no, better judgment. They were recorded originally because, but I did not want to record them because the band was yeah. not ready to record. What band? It's Angels on the Battlefield. It was just you. No. Who's on those album? Those songs? Uh, there's me. Yeah. There's my buddy Charlie. Yeah. Uh, there's Anthony, who's on on the Wings of Dragons. That one's the yeah. ones that I want to do. But uh, <laughs> why did you want to do those and not the other ones? Uh, because we were starting to. That's what, right when I met you. Yeah. Hey. And you started teaching me like the whole business aspect yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we need to focus on the business. Yeah. Music is. We have the music. Whatever. We, whatever. That's not. We could just do the business. But the other guys in the band, uh, my buddy Frank and they my buddy songs. Nick and my buddy Rob. Uh, wanted to be like, oh, we're in the band. We wanted to have stuff that uh, we're on that we could, you know, show people. And it's like, but we're not ready to record. So we ended up recording when we weren't ready. Why weren't you ready? Because we there was no point to go and record because the brand hadn't yeah, earned the right to record. Music has nothing to do with your brand. Yeah, but what's the point of going to record if we're not ready to record? Because you're artists. You're supposed to be creating. Yeah, but we can create and not record. But you said what you created was not what you wanted. No, but I yet said you're still no, no, using no. the base of that song. No, I said what I recorded yeah. is not what I wanted because I did not want to record. Oh, so the recording is not what I wanted to do because that is not. Folks, this is what an artist sounds like. If he was in a record label right now talking to someone, they'd be laughing in their head and going, oh, that sounds genius. I, I agree. Mm. Do you know why? Why? Because everything you said has nothing to do with anything. It's just a preference. And it doesn't matter that it's released. That's the point, is letting go. The, the songs 
have views. The song has positive feedback. It does. And it, it that is the value of the ability to create. It's like, here it is, moving on. And now, if you play live, it could be whatever you want. If you want to record it again, you could record it again. It doesn't matter. That's the point of art. It doesn't matter. But to put that kind of value into it's not what I wanted, that's artist brain. And well, that's what you, holds people back. But you're telling me that I should focus on uh, moving on to the next thing when I'm telling you that that's uh, whatever. Maybe you're correct. I'm not correct if it's not what you want to do. You should do whatever you want to do. But I, I on it. But you're redoing it. You, you rewrote the songs, right? Yes. Well, then that's fine. Re-record them. But to put any time into them beyond just doing it, you know, like, like the Black album from Metallica to me mm -hmm. was like the worst album mm -hmm. because that was when Metallica changed to some rock band, and they spent years on that album. And they lost all the soul and like creative energy, and to the point where when they did Load, I mean, uh, Saint Anger, they finally get the Saint Anger, yeah. and they were like, "Hey, uh, Kurt, uh, we were thinking no solos this album," and he was like, "No solos? <laughs> this is why people listen to a Metallica album. They're like, listen to the solo. I have to do a solo. That, that's recorded, by the way. You can watch that. <laughs> yes, it is in uh, some kind of monster. I, what do you mean no solos?" <laughs> So you're you're saying that I should uh, find new ways to build my skill of recording and not just focus on the music that I've written. Well, I mean, the way it sounds is you want your music to sound good. I want the music to sound how I have it in my head, but I need you're to never learn the get there. I need to learn the skill of how to record. Yeah, you're still never going to get there. I'm not going to learn how to record. No, you're not. You're not going to get to where the song sounds like it does in your head. And if you're going to wait for that, honestly, JD. I'm just going to record you doing it, and then I'm going to release it in 10 years, and you still won't be done with your album. Okay. Do you know why? Uh, because it will never reach how it is in my head. Impossible. Your right. head well, is I too powerful. Well, I still need powerful. to learn how to uh, record. No, I know. So I will I will take your, your, your teachings, and I will learn a new way to learn how to record this way I can understand <laughs> the process and not just fuddle around. I don't think you're hearing me. I don't think you're and hearing I, me. I don't think the audience is understanding. I don't think you're. What I, I think there's a there's a miscommunication, and I think that well, the, then we, I'll tell the audience. We've definitely gotten away from. I'll the, tell the, the point audience. Of so the episode. No, the no. This is exactly <laughs> the point of the episode. You're reliant on the art. I'm not reliant on the art. I'm trying to understand how to record. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I would like it <laughs> to that. I am satisfied with it. And what is satisfaction? What would the satisfaction be? I like this. I like this because it's what's in your head. No, it just, you just I said like that's this. you want to be able to take what's in your head and have it sound like what's in your head. That's what you said. The, I just want to make sure because I'm about to end the episode with a conclusion. I want to be happy with the recording that I make. All right. And how would you be happy? What defines a happiness? Oh, I like this. The that's end. it. That's it. So it doesn't have to sound like it does in your no. head. It just has, you just have to be happy with it. It just has to be that I'm happy with it. All right. This is still artist brain, everyone. <laughs> this is because. As long as I don't let my artist brain uh, take over and I don't let my anxiety yeah. take over, I can be happy with it. But I need to learn how to record in order to record. That's fine. But you already know how to record. I've heard just you've done stuff on your phone. It sounded great. Yeah, but I don't know why things work. So I need to learn why things work. And well, that I agree work. with. That, so that I agree is with what 100%. I'm trying to do. And that's what I was telling you. You got to learn why it works and not just like, well, I'm doing something that I. I am doing an artistic thing, so I'm going to learn over the process. Because, well, that, I, I'm trying. I then why? I paint, maybe I'm not uh, doing a good job of explaining that I'm trying to learn why things work and like how it works. The problem is because your music, you already have a predestined idea of what the music's supposed to sound like. Even though you're changing your argument, we could listen to the ra the episode. You did say what's in my head. I want it I to sound say, like what it's in my head, right? You, I did say that, right? But. I, I did not do a good job explaining that I would need to be happy with what uh, is recorded. And you could be happy with it if it doesn't sound like what's in your head. Because I know, realistically, it's never going to sound exactly how I have it in my head because I am only human and I can never at any point reach what I would deem as uh, right. perfect. So it is impossible. It is physically, it's scientifically impossible yes. for anything for me to do anything that I do to be perfect. All right. Now I with understand that. that now. So I'm, I want to be able to get to a point where I am able to record yeah. 
and go, oh, I like how this sounds. Okay. But I need to learn how to record, why things work the way they do, and yeah. how things work in order for me to be able to record. Now, this is what, now with that said, I'm going to try to explain what I've been trying to explain very simply. Okay. Everything you just said, I agree with 100%. But that's the reason you can't use your music to learn the skill. Because you're trying to learn the skill to get to what it is you want. And that's backwards. You got to learn the skill so you have control to change it into what you want. And you're not necessarily learning the skill. You're just learning how to get the sound you want. And you have that bias of this is my music. And that's why you create exercises that are based on different sounds or different variations of just music in general based on the exercise. If you say, well, I want to learn how to get a stronger uh, mid sound through over a, a, a low end or whatever the case may be. Or I want to, how do I make clean music sound a certain way? And how do I get that frequency? If you stay away from your art, your music, now you're focusing on what? The actual skill. The skill. And nothing you do is going to be influenced by, well, this isn't how I want it to sound. And none of it will be influenced, well, well, it doesn't sound good for me. My music should sound better than this. Or whatever the artist brain that's, because your artist brain will always. So you're suggesting it. that I record not my music. Not that you record. You shouldn't record anything. Well, I need to record it so I can listen yeah, back but, while I'm not But you playing. don't have to write a song. Yeah, but I still need to record. Yeah, but you be playing something. You could literally go, let me just write a rhythm that has nothing to do with anything. And and then you're working, how do I make this rhythm sound crisp and clear? So you're saying, I think what you're trying to say is that me working on stuff that I've already written that I have an emotional connection to is going to influence me to the point where I'm not going to necessarily get the full uh, value of the lesson. Is that what you're trying to tell me? That is closer to correct than not, yes. Okay, so why don't you just say that? I did. You did not say that. <laughs> I just said it. Well, I said that and you went, yes. Yeah, that. Yeah. But but also the thing is like you're you're not learning how to control this the skill if you're just trying to get to a, a specific a sound. sound. And your emotions to your art. It's the same thing like telling a, a painter going, all right, I know this is your style of painting, but let's work on this. And they go, yeah, but this doesn't look anything like my painting. And you're like, well, we're not learning how to do your painting. We're learning how uh, we're learning the this had a technique of uh, of, of painting and uh, but that doesn't look like the painting i want and like well let's ignore that and just work on how to use the brush you know and and that was always a skill that helped me with everything from drawing to music to writing even like to i tell you all the time stop trying to write drums to your music because you don't know how drums work so write out songs that exist that have drums that have drums write out the drums as best you can to that song and not only can you visually see it but it'll make sense to you you'll go oh i see why the drummer's doing that in fact didn't i just buy the dream theater piano book the other like, you did right why did i do that so you could practice seeing piano i want yeah even though i started on piano i want to see what piano looks like over those songs because I can hear it, but I'm not visually seeing it. And visually seeing it allows me to learn how to write piano, right? Because I already know how to play piano. I, I've played piano. It's my first instrument, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean I know how to visualize a Jordan Root is playing and going, why? And now I get to say, why is he choosing these melodies and these chords over these song, these parts? And you're looking at the map instead of just driving right that's there. That's right. Because I already have the tools to play the instrument and I already have the, the theory to write. But now I'm like, I want to I want to kind of take apart his his ability to do that. And it has nothing to do with the music. It's just how is he taking theory and utilizing theory into this situation? Um and when I say music, I mean like the resolve of it. Like I'm just trying to understand the theory of it. Uh, and that's why, and I'm 42 years old and I consider myself a master musician and I'm still, you're still learning. I'm still doing it the way I was taught to do it, which is break it down from the beginning to understand the end. You can't understand the end until you master the, the beginning. beginning. You know, it's like throwing you in the pool and going swim. You're going to survive. You're not going to swim. You're going to paddle however you have to to stay afloat. But you're not going to understand how. Yeah, you're not understanding. Now mm -hmm. you have no control of that swimming until I start teaching. All right, the reason you're going to kick your feet this way and your arms this way and you're turning your head so you can breathe when your head comes out of the water for a second, but you want to keep your head on the right? Now you're learning how to swim, and now you can become the next Michael Phillips or something like that. 
Maybe. Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. That's his name with the gold. How does he stay afloat with all those gold medals? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't make this stuff up. I'm Thomas J. Beleza. I make up uh, at least half of it. I'm J.D. McGivney. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's right, right <laughs> <laughs> What a dumb dog. He's sleeping. He looks hungry. Should we feed him to the to the jackals? I mean, we should. I don't know. Check out bbrproductions.com because you have to if you want to learn how to be annoying like us. I mean, it's pretty accurate. It's almost six o'clock, dude. Um, what are we eating for dinner? I don't know. Let's call it a day. Tacos. Don't call it a comeback. All right. Anyway, I've next been here for topic. Years. No, all right. <laughs> all right, good night. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Hey, Au revoir. Bye. Thanks Bye. for hanging. <laughs> oh, look, I have a beard. Who? Look at that. That is a nice beard. We have look at our beards. Ooh. Oh, that's television. All right, bye. <laughs>